Hello? Hello? Hey! How's it going? It's going. It's going. You recording this so you can put me on YouTube? You're already on YouTube, bro. Yeah, I know what I am. You know what you are? What does that mean? So, I also know that you like to do that to people. Do what to people? You record them and throw them on YouTube. Catch people in lot. Texting me the video of you, of, of you recording Kit. You understand that was my final conversation with Kit before he sent police to my house and said that I was suicidal, right? You can see I'm not suicidal in that conversation whatsoever. What does that have to do with anything? So why did... HR think I was suicidal. That I have told you multiple times. It's not something that you didn't throw around everywhere at the store. I, other than the jokes that, so, so I'm sorry, is Jeff still work there? Because he talked about killing Kenny pretty much on a daily basis. He's still there, though, right? I make jokes about suicide, and I'm not there. And so, I, so it's from making jokes about suicide? Is that why I'm not there? Is that what you're saying now? Seth, you just gave me a whole list of the reasons that you're not there. And if you can't take that as the reason that you're not there, what else do you want from me? So now it's my what, fault. What, what, else do you, what else do you want from me? I'd like you to be honest with me, Alan. I have been. No. Yet, yet, yet to tell me anything. So what, what YouTube video, what YouTube videos of mine were people upset about? Uh, specifically? Yeah. The one that you and, I don't know if it was your girl, your daughter, I don't know who it was, was doing a trip, and you was in a dress, and you was choking her out on the bed. Choking That's her out on the bed? That is the one. I don't know the link to it. I, I, you know which one it is. Oh, I, I do. I, I don't think choking her out on the bed is quite the, quite the, uh... <laughs> the one where she was bleeding from the forehead. Yeah. That one. Yeah, the, the, the one where, the, the, the video, we've been in, I've been in five fights in my life, or six fights in my life, and five of them were with her. Two of them we managed to get on tape, but one of them got lost in a storage unit. So that's all we got, is that one tape. And it shows that she was screaming like a lunatic from the can, and I finally told her to shut the fuck up, and she threw a fit and attacked me. So that's why I was fired? I don't know. You do I know it. I think it is a multiple of everything. I think it's the letters that you sent to Karen. I think it's the letter that you sent to corporate. I think it's your reaction to all of it. My letter? What letter I sent to corporate? I told you that. What letter did I send to corporate? The one where you said that Karen must have something on Kenny because... You understand I said that after they suspended me, right? That was my... After they suspended you, not after they fired you. So you think that document where I explained everything that went down, including Karen serving expired food to people... Over and over again, and none of you doing anything about it. That's why I got fired. I think it's a multitude. It's everything. Seth. It's not one thing. Then why won't they tell me, though? You think they'd tell me if... I, they keep saying I violated a company policy, but what was the policy, bro? I don't know. You don't know? Kenny didn't no. tell you? No. Really? It wasn't Kenny's decision either. I don't even think Kenny wanted to know. Kenny didn't want to know why one of his best employees was fired. That that's that's your story now. Kenny did not want. I, and 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 let, correct me if I'm wrong. You and I were two of the hardest working employees at the store, correct? I believe so. Okay, so I was one of the best employees at the store, correct? I believe so. Yeah. What does that mean? It means, just like I told you at the store, you need to 
need to calm down and stay in your lane and keep your head down and stop blowing up on everybody. Blowing up on everybody? I didn't raise my voice once with all the... You raised your voice multiple times. Excuse me? People felt scared. People felt scared of you. People felt scared of me? People felt scared of you. Karen felt scared of you. Who's the... The vitamin team all felt scared of you. The grocery team, Robert, told me he didn't want you back on the grocery team because he thought you were unstable. Robert said that. Based on what? Based on the fit that you were throwing in Delhi. The fit? So... When my pre when the previous deli assistant when manager used what? He said any like Kenny, Kit and I I don't know about Kit, but Kenny and I uh -huh. told you we didn't disagree with you on your thing, but you were going about it the wrong way. For how many months? How many months did I go about it? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I'm not saying that you're wrong about it. So I was right about the fact that Karen was doing heinous, horrible things and that we were had we had an inspection coming up and they were deliberately tanking it. And you agree with that, and Kenny agreed with that, and you agree that it went on for months. Correct? Hello? I'm here. Yeah, do you do you disagree with that? You I'd like you to answer that question. Alan, I'd like you to answer that one question, please. I'll, rep I'll repeat it in case it was unclear. You just said you and Kenny agreed that Karen was doing heinous things as my boss and that I was trying to fix it and that it went on for months. Correct? And you were also exacerbating it. You weren't, you weren't fixing it, Seth. You're Al making it worse. You just said that Two of the three managers of the store agreed it was a problem. Were either of them fixing it? Kenny was trying to fix it. How? That's on Kenny. I, you know what? It, that's on Kenny and Kit and that side of the store. That was not my job, and I didn't want a part of that. Can you give an I example? One example of Kenny trying to fix it. Okay, so you can't. So my point is, is that they... Absolutely, but I'm not going to get... You're what? You cut out. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it. What do you mean you're not going to get into it? Because there's absolutely examples. Because there's absolutely examples. Give me one. I'm not going to tell you that because it's not your business. It's not my business why the person who broke food safety laws and fucking tanked the department for months while I tried to fix it and no one would help me... That's none of my business, correct? Because it feels like there just was... Because, just, you know, just because you personally don't see something getting done about somebody else, it's not you. It's not your... Did anything get done? You were an issue and Kenny had to do something about you or discipline you. And it wouldn't have been... What, when did, when did Kenny discipline... Can, not, you don't manage people by telling everybody else. Well, you're not a manager there anymore, so your stories are a little strange. Kenny never disciplined me, though. You're saying that Kenny disciplined me. It, it was me I literally... Kenny disciplined you. I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. I was Ken, bringing up a hypothetical situation so that you could get it through your head. That is not somebody else's business. You don't... You don't Tell people, oh, hey, I wrote, I wrote such and such up for this. Don't worry about it. I wrote such and such up for this, and we're going through the process of getting her removed or anything like that. That's not what you do. But if they were writing her up and she was in the process of getting removed, you think she would have corrected her behavior instead of doubling down on it? It seems if a, if a manager in charge of an entire department... Do you think... You know, you know, Karen, do you think that any corrective action would have been able to fix it? No, I think she should have been fired years ago. It have had to go through the process. What and process? Go through the process. You were giving her all the ammo she needed to be able to fight back against you because you sent her a nasty letter. 
the letter wasn't nasty when it got to her. I mean, the first draft was nasty. I'll, I agree, but the, the draft you she know, got was pretty constructive. What's that? You said she was worse than Helen Keller. I took that out of the draft she got, bro. That wasn't in her draft. That was in my rough draft that a few of the uh, other people who can't believe she wasn't fired years ago read. That did not go to Karen. The letter that went to Karen would pass muster at any company on earth. So your story now is that I was on the verge of being fired the whole time and so was Karen, but somehow I got fired and she didn't even though all I was doing was trying to get her to not do all the fucked up shit that she was doing. Is that your story? All you were doing is blowing up and cussing people out. Who did I cuss out? Making people feel uncomfortable. Who did I cuss That's out? Doing. Who did I cuss out, Alan? Hey, that, Who did I cuss out? Well, Fuck, dude, you lying piece of shit. It's is a reality. Fuck you, dude. You're a lying piece of shit, dude. I am so sick of this and bullshit. Fuck. How long ago did this happen? You know when it happened. Well, Alan. Well, Alan, you're not going to believe this. Okay. 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 Alan, was I or was I not one of the best? Completely ruined your life. And your life would be peaches and cream right now if it weren't for Karen. Is that it? That's not it, Alan. I just want you to stop lying to me. And it makes no sense why you keep doing it. Okay. I'm sorry that you can't accept that I've told you the truth on everything. Did you tell them that I told you that I would, they threatened to kill myself? Later on, yeah. Absolutely. La later on, what's later on mean? After HR had already called me about you. So HR called you about me and what'd they ask? Hold on, I have to make a delivery. Sure. next one perfect and I, I appreciate you talking to me man I'm, I'm I don't think you understand how ridiculous it is to try to live a life when everyone lies to your face and then talk shit behind your back it's been it's been pretty brutal man It was the eleventh hey, time, Alan. What that feels like? To, to get fired eleven times hey. in, in ways that make no sense? You don't know what that feels like? 
Hold on, how many times? Eleven. 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 The one before you was my uh, union representative fired me from uh, uh, Price Chopper. My union rep fired me, and then even though the contract said that they were supposed to give us arbitration, he said there was nothing he could do. My UFCW union representative fired me from the job before the one that you keep making up different stories of what I was fired from at Sprouts. No? Nobody's making up different stories, Seth. So why was I fired? The phone cut out there. That's the be That was the best phone cut out in history. Go ahead. Well, well, employer, they can fire people for whatever reason or no reason at all at any time. It says it right there in the hiring contract. True. I'm not saying that that's right of them to do. Mm -hmm. But but you agree. I've never, I've never been happy or not being asked for Well, I mean, I, I, I get that. And they were they were crushing your soul, and I totally get that. But you agree that I, you and I, were two of the hardest working employees in the store, correct? I believe so. Okay, I was one of your top. Like, if you had to pick three employees to do like a reset or something overnight, would I be on that list? Absolutely. Okay, but you think Sprouts, Sprouts just fired me because they can? Is what you're saying? How so? I think, that, I think that they should have told you or LP and loss prevention should have had that conversation with you instead of making Kit do it when he doesn't even really know why. He's just like, that they've made the decision to let you go. And I don't even know how that conversation went with you and him. It, it, went, it went pretty pretty weird, I can tell you that much. Because... I mean, as you know, a couple days before that happened, him and Karen called me in the office and said I had to cut production in half. It took me months to get that department at a level where I would come in on my 10-hour shifts overnight and actually get it the shelves full. And then they said cut it in half, which would have destroyed it. Why would they do that, do you think? I think mostly because they... They were trying to meet the film goals, and they didn't really... Alan, know. I was meeting the film goals. You know I was meeting the film goals. I was within the uh, film margin of error without a doubt. What? The numbers were not right. The, you guys were less than 80% compliant. We fell under 80% because they wouldn't rotate. They wouldn't rotate the meals, dude. Sure. What? Sure. Yeah, well... That could be... Reason, could be, yeah. Could be. weren't listening to you about the reason. The, you mean the you obvious reason? People, you have a way of addressing people that's very off-putting, and I don't think Karen wanted to listen to a thing he had to say. But I thought you said Kenny was on it. I mean, if 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 Kim if if her refusing to ever rotate anything and never making the staff rotate anything led to an incredible increase in the amount of spoils, and it was bringing us below the FIM margin of error, and Kenny knew this. Why did I get fired and not Karen? So much of management is based off of other people's performance, right? So if Karen can't get everybody to do their jobs correctly, morning crew, give you a bad example, mm -hmm. Karen went on a leave of absence, and a month later, after her being on a leave, I, I don't know if she's back yet, but a month later, the department was worse than it had ever. Wow. It's, it's, ever. it's almost like after, after having her in charge, and when the morning crew sees her... Can I finish this sentence, please? It's an important sentence, no. man. So 
after she literally coached them through using three-day-old shrimp or re relabeling three-day-old shrimp so it could be used past its expiration date in salad that was going to then sit for another seven days. Do you think maybe when they see that type of environment where the actual department manager is having them break laws and put customers' lives at risk, and the assistant manager is trying to stop all that, now the assistant's gone, and then the manager who encouraged them to do all these wrong things is gone, you think they would just step in and start doing better things? That doesn't make sense. No, leadership is definitely what they lacked over there. But it's not just that. It's people are taking shortcuts all over the place. No way! Not just, not just Karen. Whoa, no kidding! And it was happening before Karen got to the department, and that's why yeah. Kenny and Kate were hoping that putting Karen over there would fix that. They it didn't. And it immediately started to get worse, and mm -hmm. she fell into the same shit that they were doing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the morning crew, you can't tell them nothing. Oh, I, oh you're telling me this. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Captain. You, you know this. Thank you, Captain. Hold on a second. Sure. Okay. I got to make this next delivery. No worries. Hold on a second. Wait, corporate came in when? Um, two months ago. Okay. Um, they announced this restructure and that Kit and I's heads were on the chopping block because they were getting rid of the non-perishables and the perishable ASM and huh. That's what making one, one assistant store manager. There's just one assistant store manager now? Yeah. Oh my god. So, while, uh, yeah, while, uh, while Karen was on leave and we're extremely short staff and people are clicking left and right, then the, uh, the new head of the, what the hell is his title? Some made up fucking title. Um, Vice President of Operation, uh, I don't know what the hell it was. Mm -hmm. um, some made up corporate title. Came in, took pictures, and sent it all to Darla. Melanie's not there anymore. Melanie quit? No, she's in Oklahoma because they restructured the corporate right. first. That's why I don't know what these people's titles were. Yeah. They did it, and then right afterwards did the uh, core management team. I don't understand. If, if two assistant managers can barely keep their heads above water, how are they doing it with one? I don't know. I mean, does Kenny, have, does Kenny have to work now? Or? Ouch. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out the, the logistics of it. <laughs> you are. I mean, he, You're far from the first person to say that. He, he's got to come out of, he's got to put that phone down and come out of the office now, bro. That's got to be brutal. Anywho, I don't want I, I don't want it to be a I, I I'm I'm not mad at anyone because it's obviously that I got it's I mean there's just no question I got fired for the same reason I got fired from the other ten jobs, bro. I mean it just it doesn't make sense otherwise. Well, I wasn't there through you, or I wasn't there with you throughout the other jobs. You sure weren't. People don't get fired for suicide threats. It wasn't a threat. Alan, can we not call it a suicide? Since you were the one I talked to, can we not say it? What I, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. What I said to you when I was standing in my apartment and you were in your car driving away from Sprouts was that if you guys can't get Karen to start doing her job, I'm going to jump off a bridge. That sound like what I said? Uh, no, 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 conversation. You and I. What? What did? You, what do you remember? What? You're breaking up. I can't. I didn't hear. I didn't hear the, any of that. You broke up.
Again, not not a word of that came through. I think you're. I think. There's a sheet in the office that says um, a list of things that people are allowed to say and what not to say and what the like. It has like three different levels of threats. Uh-huh. Like, uh, I pulled. You remember Peter? No. Which one was Peter? Oh yeah, Peter. Yeah, 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 Peter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I human. I know. I remember. Um, I pulled him into the office and showed him this paper one time um, because things like uh, even jokingly saying um, one day you're going to get what's coming to you <laughs> even in a joking manner has to be reported. Has to be reported? Yeah. Wow. Um, the, the guy that got hired to replace you mm-hmm. Uh, Malachi, he uh, he was pissed off and vented on Facebook about uh, killing his boss and was let go the very next week. Of course he was. Because one of the team members jumped on Facebook and was like, look at this, look at this, and reported him to HR. Uh-huh. Um, but that didn't happen to me. No, I imagine that's exactly what happened to you. But I, I didn't threaten anyone on Facebook. So then what did they report? I feel that LP and HR should have taken the time to have that conversation with you themselves. That way they actually could have pinpointed down an exact thing that was said or an exact reason. But You would think that if, if, if it was I an actual like, investigation, you think they would have tried to get my side of any of that, right? But if it's not an, if it wasn't an actual investigation, if the decision was made to fire me long before that, then it would go just as it did go, correct? Uh, if they decided to, if they decided to fire you before they even spoke with you, you know, I said, you know, when I sat in my, it may have been, may have been. I don't know. It may have been the suicide thing that they decided. Not what suicide thing? The only person, the only person no, I, the what? The comments. What comments? The ones like, oh, I'm gonna jump off a bridge, or I'm gonna kill myself, or. That was on the phone to you yeah, in my apartment. That, no, that wasn't on the phone with me. On the phone with me, you had a little more serious conversation about it. Did I? What do you remember? Yeah. Please share share your recollections of that fateful day where I said something to you in confidence and lost my job for it. You didn't lose your job for that. That's the first thing the HR guy asked me when he called. That is because his conversation with me asking about this person We've had two or three team members from your store uh, call about comments that he's made and his mental stability, and they are afraid of him. Um, can you tell me what you know about this person? And I was like, well, he's, he has mentioned that before. Um, Jokingly. Did you mention that we all joke about that? That everyone in the store talks about, like Jeff walks around with a fucking noose in his pocket sometimes? Well, I don't. And I'm not a fan. I was never a fan of Jeff. Um, And coming from... He doesn't really, by the way. I mean, that's I'm just metaphorically. But from being an actual suicidal person myself, that's why I don't joke about it. Okay. Much like people that have been raped before, don't talk about, don't joke about that. Um, so two, to, so now, so now, what you're saying though is that two to three people from Sprouts 
called the HR hotline and said they were scared of me. That's that's now why you think I got fired? That's how the, that's how the conversation initiated. Then he, he said, I'm going to send you a picture of this person. I just want you to confirm that it is or is not Seth. And what he sent me was a fucking screenshot from one of your YouTube videos. Which one? I don't know. It was a it was an older one for sure. You you were uh, still heavier set. Still had my um, what? You what? I still had my what? You were still heavier set. Oh. It had to have been before the weight loss thing. <laughs> okay, but what you don't remember? Uh, like what was what was where was I standing? Was I was it a video of me? I didn't have any videos at Sprouts. What was the video? No, it was you were just you were just sitting in a room. You looked like you were uh, sitting. It was. There was like nothing in the background, like a white wall or something, and uh, you were just wearing your like a blue shirt and your suspenders. Okay. He showed you that picture from my YouTube video to confirm that it was me. Yeah. Wow, bro. And I mean, I was like, "Yes, this is Seth," and that's that's it. Um, and then I tried to stay out of it from the rest of it. That, oh, thanks, um, bro. Thank, group, thanks for not group, sticking up for me. Staying out of it. That was nice. What am I supposed to do at that point? I'm sorry. As a member of management who could give me a good recommendation, I would think you would say he's one of my best employees. Everyone jokes around. He, uh, he Last year, he was one of the six nominees for Employee of the Year, which means people aren't scared of him. They actually respect him, like his sense of humor, and enjoy working with him. That's what I would have liked you to say. The management team likes you. What does that mean? But it wasn't a conversation like, hey, let's get to know this person. He said, I only want you to tell me, is this him or is this not him? Okay. So that was the investigation. You confirmed that I'm the guy in the YouTube video and then I got fired. From what? The only reason I knew it was a YouTube video is because I knew that it was one of your YouTube videos. <laughs> because I've seen it. But you don't remember which one it was. I'm, I'm just it just like a picture of you. Yeah, I know, but I, I'm just curious which video specifically he was screenshotting. I don't know. Well, you said you had seen that video, right? No, I have seen you in YouTube videos. Oh, okay, you, you just recognized me on YouTube. I get it. I get it. Okay. So I recognized that it was the picture that he sent me was a screenshot of a YouTube video. Okay. But and, and, I don't know which one. And do you think it's a little weird, just from your experience in the out in the world, that you know, literally for months as we're waiting for this inspection to come, and I'm trying to get us ready, and Karen is literally undoing the things, including remember that time that they uh, crossed off the seven day date on a thing of uh, uh, pesto and wrote a forty day date on it. That was great. Remember that? Yeah, that was. Uh... That actually had, I think, Darla's involvement. Yeah, I called because I reached out to Darla and said, "They, they, first of all, writing it in pen, crossing off a date dot and writing forty day ex expiration date is a fail right there." I involved Darla because everyone took the side of, "Hey, it's forty days," even though it was clearly seven. But my point is. So that happened, and then Kenny, and th first of all, Kenny threw me on overnights, threw off my sleep schedule, then put me on mornings, then put me back on overnights. So I was getting no sleep. Then he went on vacation, and the day he went on vacation, Kit and Karen say, cut your production in half, decimate th the whole department, which of course put stress on me, correct? Okay, so that happens day one of his uh, vacation. Then the next day I work, I come in, and there's a bag of frozen shrimp defrosting in a cardboard box on top of a rack of cooked food. Do you think she did that on accident, or do you think she did that on purpose? I don't presume to know what she does on purpose or accident. But it's possible she did that deliberately to try to provoke me, correct? Knowing that I was going to come in and see that. I don't know about that. But it's possible. I mean, 
she she as the it's head of it possible that somebody i mean not me but somebody like me who was trying to do a million other things just left it there no she admitted it was her no 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 she she admitted it was her alan the reason i finally raised my voice after i'm not saying that it i'm not saying that it wasn't her or that i'm not saying that i'm saying that when you're trying to juggle a million different things and you're overwhelmed, then things like that do happen on accident. So I'm not saying that she did it on accident or on purpose. I'm just saying that but what, if it were me in said situation, I could have made a mistake like that. Sure, everyone makes mistakes. My point is all these mistakes happened the moment Kenny went away where Karen and Kit were deliberately provoking me at a level higher than them obviously trying to provoke me with things like the 40-day date on seven day pesto. So I raised my voice. Now when I raise my voice, from what I understand, it's very loud and scary. And I'm assuming when you said the vitamin girls were scared, it's because they heard that yell, which was louder than most people have ever heard a human yell, correct? Um, not just that, but they were privy to the YouTube videos too. So they also think I was choking Victoria out when I was grabbing her shoulders to try to get her to stop screaming bloody murder at 2 a.m. in a hotel room. I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. Well, I guess I got fired for what it looks like then, huh? Possibly. Yeah. But back to well, Karen. I, I mean, so... I don't even, I don't even, you're not going to give me any information, dude. I don't even, <laughs> good luck, I guess. Have a great life. Let's talk about, why are you, why, why are you not employed and have health insurance? Well, you want to know the real reason? I'll tell you, bro. I don't care anymore. Do you want to know? Are you sure you want to know? This is the rabbit hole right here, bro. Oh, I'm talking to you. Okay. So 20 years ago, apparently, um, I had the best website in the world to prove that 9-11 was an inside job. And I know, I didn't realize at the time, obviously, but some weird things started happening with former classmates from high school coming out of the woodwork and just fucking with me. And I didn't know what hypnosis looked like then. Now going back, I realized that they hip hypnotized one of my classmates from high school into making false accusations against me and then spending 20 years telling people whatever those, I don't know what they are. I just know that she contacts people and tells them that. Absolute signs of hypnosis, just like the seven people I've documented hypnotizing Victoria in and out of her personalities, making her do all kinds of crazy things, raping her multiple times all to f try to get me to do the same thing Karen tried to get me to do when she put an entire bag of open shrimp on top of a bunch of food. So, not only did your mysterious firing that you are kind of giving me hints at but won't quite tell me everything, and the firing before... I don't know anything else. Gotcha. And the firing before that, you, you, you agree that it's a little weird that my union representative got me fired from my previous job, correct? That sounds strange to you? But how do you know it was him? I recorded the whole thing. And not what you said before when we worked. Before you did the weight loss study, you said that it was because you sent... Uh, letter to their uh to corporate yeah i did send a letter to corporate alan but i also have you said that's why you got fired well alan things are never quite as simple as the easy explanation are they my union representative show I mean, it's easier than it's easier than choosing to believe that everyone in the world is out to get you alan my union representative popped his head in the kitchen when I was working there. He said, I need to speak to you upstairs. So I turned on my camera, put it in my pocket, and went upstairs. That's when he told me, 
our union contract doesn't recognize the assistant deli manager position. So technically you have no power. So you can't discipline people when they take expired food from the case and make meals with it and put it three days past expiration date selling to people. I was no longer allowed to discipline people for that. So I asked him, I'm like, well, they're going to keep doing it. What should I do if I see them doing that? And he said, oh, and I quote, you need to document it and let your department manager know, the store manager know, and send a copy to HR. So the very next time that she, she didn't actually, the, the next thing she did is she changed the date. The expo, on, uh, You know, we had like big display cases of, of open like salads and stuff. She crossed off the expiration date and wrote in a new date in fucking pen so it would be served expired. I took a picture of that. I sent it to my department manager, my store manager, and HR. A few days later, I get called upstairs again. My union rep isn't there this time. But I get fired for sending that picture to my department manager, my store manager, and HR. That was the reason they gave for my firing, was doing the thing my union rep told me to do. That sound normal to you? Nope. Sounds like bullshit, but yeah. also. But also, oh, here's the but also. Did I look, you? What? Did you? Did I what? Send explanations with the picture, or did you just send the picture? What do you think I did? I think you sent explanations with the picture. Well, there you go. Because it's my job. Because well, here's the funny part. So the union rep is telling me you no longer have power as an assistant manager because we don't recognize the position. But I'm still the assistant manager and have all the duties. Right? So the, the company still has me in this position that my union rep just said I don't have any power in. So then after the firing, I call the union rep and he says, well, we can file a grievance, but that's all we can do. Okay, sorry about that. Um, uh, so, okay. so I'm on an Air Force base, and I'm working my butt off, and I'm making $25 an hour. And the phone rings in my room, my dormitory room, and this very strange TV repairman from California says, Seth, I want you to be a sleeper cell. Then the next morning, I get dragged into the office and fired, and then they let me work another week, and then they send me back to California. And that was 2009. That commander who fired me after I got a phone call telling me to be a sleeper cell just commented on my Facebook page a couple days ago and has been for years. Usually in conjunction with Victoria being raped, he will pick a fight with me on some random Facebook post, post of mine that no one else commented on. So I'm dealing with, hey, Victoria got raped again and the commander of the military base where I got fired in 2009 is starting fights with me on my Facebook wall. That seems strange to you, Alan. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah. I got fired from a, uh, I worked at a memory care facility in Oregon and they had one of the staff who was like, she did like the, uh, hung up the, she planned the events and stuff and kept everyone busy. She was an actual nurse or, or uh, assistant. Like, you know, I had actually changed diapers and, and stuff like that. So she comes in at mealtime and you can imagine at a memory care facility with all these old people with their different ailments and some of them don't know who they are. Mealtime's rough for one person to supervise. I think it was eight people. So she comes into my, my, we had four separate wings. She comes into my wing at mealtime and basically starts a fight with one of, one of the people who I just got to sit down and eat. It's a whole fight where she's pulling, she's pulling the resident's sweater off and saying she found a, a knife in her thing, like a whole thing that she obviously initiated. My response is, can, you know, why are you disrupting the mealtime? I'm having a hard enough time trying to run this by myself. Her, me, and one of the other supervisors go into a room to talk it out. And I'm like, what the heck was that? And he's like, what the heck was that? And they fired me. And they said that he, that third party, 
took the side of the woman who disrupted my department. So when I fought for unemployment, I got to see the file. And I got to read his written statement. His written statement was, Seth did nothing wrong. The other person clearly initiated it. Seth did not threaten her in the meeting. He was just exasperated because it made no sense what she was doing. Totally vindicated me. And that was the document that they said was why they fired me. Are you getting the pattern yet, Alan? You know, the day I met Kenny, see, I, I applied for the, the uh, I believe it's the assistant bakery manager position. And I went in thinking I was, I, I was coming for that, but he said, no, that's already been filled. I got a spot for you in grocery. I knew something was weird about Kenny at that first meeting because he was from the Inland Empire. It's a small region of California where people are very proud to be from the IE. So the very few times in my life I've been outside of California and I run into someone from the IE, we're like, oh, IE, what's up, yo? Not Kenny. He's like, yeah, I'm Rancho Cucamonga. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm from Riverside. And he didn't seem surprised. He, it's like he knew when he hired me exactly who I was and where I was from. And I knew by his reaction to that that he was going to oversee my firing. I knew the day I was hired the first time at Sprouts, before I went to Massachusetts and then came back and got rehired, I knew Kenny was going to fire me. I just didn't know he was going to go on vacation while Kit and Karen set me up with all kinds of bullshit so I would finally raise my voice, thus violating company policy and giving them a legal reason why they could terminate me. Wah, wah. But why, would he, why would he have hired you back? To fire me? To fire me the week before Thanksgiving? No. Yeah. No, no. Because you know what? That, you know what the last time I had that feeling about somebody? Like I did with Kenny, that weird feeling like, I know I'm just getting hired, but it feels like this guy's going to fire me. The previous time was the day that I was introduced to my new union representative. The old union rep brought him in to meet us, and he shook my hand, and he knew me, dude. He shook my hand in a way, I'm like, oh, fuck, this guy's gonna... I just knew when I met him. And then a few... I don't even know how many months later I lost track of time. He calls me upstairs to set me up to be fired and then violates the union contract by not helping me when I did get fired. Which brought me to you and Sprouts, where you admit I'm one of the best employees there. And apparently... I got fired because they thought I was strangling Victoria in a YouTube video and because I, I don't even know anymore, dude. It's just going in circles and I just don't. Know. I just want you to know I have to go talk to the vitamin girls and explain to them what really happened. So they're going to know you told me that they were afraid of me because there's no way I can't. I thought they were my friends. I was just in there a week ago and they were, I mean, I sensed everybody in that store is nervous around me in a way that they never were when I worked there. Since I got fired and everyone thinks I got fired for being mentally unstable, now everyone, and apparently for strangling Victoria, so that's, that's why everyone looks at me like that, huh? Everyone thinks I strangled Victoria in a video where I clearly wasn't strangling Victoria. I mean, you got some, you got some stuff on YouTube that is kind of jarring for the average person. Right? Can you agree on that? Absolutely. I, I want to know which video got me fired is all. So, so, uh, so, now, so now we're coming full circle. So now it wasn't all those other reasons that I got fired. It's because of the YouTube channel. Right? Yeah, I mean, it, no, like I said, I think it's accumulation of all of it. And I think Sprouts rather than, I, I don't know, I think 
the Sprouts just wanted to kind of wash their hands of it because this guy might be a liability. I don't know. There's, I mean, in your YouTube videos, you got heavy drug use. Or at least it looks like you're on drugs. Agreed? Yep. It, my YouTube channel, I don't have, I'm, I, first of all, Sprouts doesn't drug test, and second of all, me being on drugs, they do, they do with, they do with probable cause, that's why when, that's why when Kenny and I first went to that store, it was because a whole bunch of people had just got fired for, um, smoking weed. So that, that, so, I mean, there's still the, there's still the paperwork that you have to sign saying that. You don't use drugs. I have a medical marijuana card. I'm allowed to use medical marijuana, as does most of the people in that store. The people that were fired were fired for smoking at the store. That's true. Uh, well, that's a little different than me smoking drugs in a YouTube video made years before I worked at Sprouts, correct? It's fair to say that the rumor... Yeah, so that that, Wait, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't know that that is out there, and they didn't know about it. That's all I know. Okay. Well, just, uh, you know, if, if, if you get to... But as far as, as far as... For real, though, as far as finding a job... It's over, buddy. Like, it's... It's over. It's over, Alan. Easy to find a job right it's now. over, Alan. I'm not doing it again. If you think I'm gonna go, it was four fucking months from the time he put me on overnights, then back to mornings, then back to overnights, and then they just kept fucking with me over and over again. You know they did. You fucking know that you just admitted they did. That there were multiple employees doing that to me. The overnights versus the mornings versus the overnights. That was nothing you didn't agree to do, sis. Is that a joke? That Kenny was, threatened me into taking the overnight position. He said if I didn't take this promotion, there wouldn't be any more offered to me. And then, by the way, he said that. Then I took the, pr the promotion. Then he told me it was going to be overnights. Just to be clear, the timeline of me ending up on overnights. And then back to mornings. And then, oh, real quick, now you have to start going to bed six hours earlier. And Karen is now upping her game for literally just destroying the apartment. Destroying it. Just, the thing they told me to do, to cut production in half, would have been the end of any possible balance of those shelves being full. And everyone knows it. There's no rational reason why they would tell me to do that and no one would tell Karen, hey, maybe we should rotate. When we take the newer meals from the back, we should put them under the old meals instead of on top of them because that might cut back on the shrink. None of that, right? None of that. Just keep fucking with Seth until he raises his voice and hey, now he's fired. Oh, right before the uh, 11th anniversary of the last time he had sex, we think he's going to be a terrorist on fucking uh, that particular day, so we're going to fire him right before and see what he does. Good times! That was the 11th time, Alan, and I'm still not a terrorist, so I guess that means I'm not going to be one. What do you think? But by, me, by all means, they're going to keep raping Victoria... Over and over again. The, this last one, she mentioned in passing. Literally in passing, like, yeah, and then I was in his van, and he pulled my pants down, and I told him no. Just mentions it and goes on with her day now. Totally lost count. The last video I put out is called Hypnotist Number 7, because this is the seventh guy I've caught using the exact same techniques to hypnotize her and ruin her life. Which happens coincidentally with me getting fired from 11 jobs and with the commander of an Air Force base 
harassing. You know, you know the best part about him harassing me all these years? As he keeps telling whenever I post a video of Victoria being raped, talking about being raped, or obviously being hypnotized, he says I'm imagining it. Total oh, no, dude. He, he, he uh, what you call it, gaslights me. He gaslights the shit out of me over that. And then, right before July 4th, he told me I should go buy a gun and go to California to protect her. Does that sound weird to you? Have a gun in California. Well, he, uh, he was very careful. He's like, you got to make sure you follow the California gun laws. But uh, I advise, even though I've been telling you you're crazy all these years, now I think you should go to California and buy a gun and make sure you fill out all the paperwork and then protect her. Does that sound like it makes any sense why the commander of an Air Force base who fired me because I got a phone call telling me to be a sleeper cell would then be telling me to buy a gun and go to California and avenge Victoria from the people that he keeps saying aren't hypnotizing her? Well, clearly this dude is the fucking with you. You think? Do you think? But that doesn't mean the rest of the world is. No, no, Alan. I, I have to say, like, for real... As much as I wanted to believe that Kenny knows more than what he said he did, and because he kept saying, you know, I don't know anything, it's not my decision, it's not, I'm not part of it, they're not telling me anything, Darla, please just give me something, because Darla's the uh, regional now, she's Kenny's boss. Wait, Darla, is, it, Darla took over for Melanie? Yep. Oh, wow. Because they split the, they split the regions. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, a whole bunch of different districts. So we were the, a District 13, the one that doesn't exist from the Hunger Games movie. <laughs> Hashtag um, irony. <laughs> um, but as much as I wanted to believe that Kenny knew more about it and he would have stuck up for me and Kit a little more than we still have our job, I truly kind of believe him that he didn't know anything. Well, with that, I mean, I thought the Sprouts, uh, the UFCW that has, they have their own, like, Sprouts, hey, you should join a union page, that they started mentioning ASMs getting cut. It's a company-wide thing going on. So, I mean, that's probably out of his hands. But but you'd think if he had two people running a department and one was doing a great job and one was doing a terrible job, it's weird that he stuck up for the one who was doing a terrible job instead of the one who was doing a great job, don't you think? I don't know that he ever stuck up for Karen. I mean, he did, did at the beginning. Did I get fired because I mean, of... he was looking for any ammunition against her for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best like joke you have it. ever told, my friend, because okay, I well, fed well, him well, a steady well, diet of ammunition that he not only refused to use, he once crumpled up a piece of paper that she could that Clearly could have gotten fired. I I showed that she was she was uh, reporting spoils to Kehi that we got. She would send about three hundred. Yeah, and I printed it out. I'm like, these things are all in the cooler. I can show them to you. And he takes the paper from my hand and crumples it up and throws it away, not realizing I had a second copy, obviously. But does that sound like someone trying to get Karen but couldn't get evidence? Or does that sound like someone who was working with Karen to make sure that they could fire me when the time came? I don't think that's it either. No, no. That's, that's what... Because if you recall correctly, that girl who changed the date from seven days to 40 days, she was in culinary school, or culinary school, depending on how you uh, pronounce it. How prestigious you are. A little weird that somebody with that kind of training would cross off a date dot and handwrite 40 days expiration on a project based on a hunch and a misreading of a chart. And then Karen would back her. I mean, a little weird because you realize even if you couldn't tell if she was right or if I was right, if she was wrong, we fail the inspection. If I'm wrong, all we do is maybe throw away some some pesto, but probably not because I go through it in less than seven days anyway. So the only point of her, the culinary school student and Karen 
standing by that 40 day date dot was to raise my blood pressure. That's the only point of it. What other reason could there have been? Give me please what? I don't think for them that No, they just kept doing that over and over again. For fun. That's your thing. They they just happened to all be fucking with everything I was doing to fix the department and Kenny had their back. And then despite the fact that Karen has complaints from dozens of people over the years, she's still there, but I got fired because she said she felt uncomfortable, unsafe working around me. Correct? I can't, my car, my car is barely running. I can't do it. I'd have to rent a car to do it. Fuck. No, I'm, yeah, my car's done, dude. I, I'm, I pray every day it'll just get me to the store. Believe me, I would have done that. That would have, I mean, that's, can't really get fired from, uh, I mean, you can, but. Uh, you can, but it's very difficult. Well, you know, it's very difficult to get fired from two jobs in a row that the, the management team believes you're one of the best employees at the store. When my store manager at Price Chopper was walking me upstairs to get fired, I asked him about a job recommendation. He said, hell yeah, you're one of the best I've ever seen. And then he sat there quietly while I got fired for doing exactly what my union rep told me to do. So I'm going to try to be an artist now. And if I fucking die of cancer before it happens, great, dude. I just hope I keep paying my my life insurance before the tumor grows big enough to fucking end me. Because that would suck. It sucked for the kids not to get anything out of this whole ridiculousness. But there's no point going back to a job. Why would I go through that? Multiple employees at that store spent months, months fucking with me. And you just admitted that it makes no sense what they're doing, what they were doing. Clearly, all working together. It's not like some part. It's not like anyone was on my side. I really don't think it's some big conspiracy. No, theory, no, that, no, that's no, that that's you, you. just think it's normal that the commander of a military base with high clearance and and prodigious background checks would be communicating regularly with somebody who was fired after getting a phone call telling him to be a sleeper cell. That makes sense to you. No, that don't make sense to me, but that has nothing to do with bro. Really? Why would it? Because that was six jobs ago that I was fired from? That made no sense? You don't see the line between that and then the job that I got fired by my union rep and the job that I got fired for being one of the best employees at the store? I mean, I can tell you more. I can pull out the resume. I can tell you every every store I got fired from that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And every time I either get back on my feet, oh, here's, the, here's a good one. So I get to California. I, I had to abandon the RV that Vicky's family gave her because it was dead up in Oregon. I get to California and they give you two weeks in a hotel 
and then you're out on the street. So I had to get a job right away. So I went to Greenpeace, fucking gri me and me standing in front of a store with a Greenpeace folder. Is that like the perfect job or what, right? Is that me or what? Right? Sound like a perfect job for me? Getting people to donate to Greenpeace, right? You there? You're not there? Yes, it depends on your pressure tactics. No, but I mean the fit of me being a hippie and it being Greenpeace. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Yeah. Anyway, the, so here's what happened. So they train us, and then they put us out in the field in groups of four. But I didn't go out in, the group, in groups of four. I went out with one trainer, and we sat up in front of a grocery store, and he said, yeah, I'm so grateful to uh, Greenpeace because they hired me right out of prison. And I'm like, what? They, like, we had to do a background check? Like, they, no felonies? Like, how do they, what were you in prison for? Oh, having sex with my underage high school student? This is the first oh. thing... This is the first thing he tells me as him and I are standing in front of a store trying to get people to give money. So he could not work for Greenpeace. They do not hire people with felonies. And even if they did, you would think that kind of felony is probably on the list of ones they don't hire. But it doesn't matter. No felonies. Background check, criminal check. So how is somebody who just got out of six years in prison standing there telling them they have to fire me based on his recommendation. Does that make sense? No. Mm. Are you seeing the pattern yet? Or should I go on? No. I, I see you and I hear you. Okay. But why... Why give up? That's when I, you know what, after I got fired by my union representative, I said, you know what, I'm not going to give up. I've always wanted to work at Sprouts anyway. I'm going to double down and go for it. How'd that turn out? My favorite part, though, is the 10-day wait between getting suspended and getting fired because clearly he did all the, the background work he was going to do before he even talked to me. So what was the 10-day wait for, other than making me sit through Thanksgiving, not knowing if I was fired or not? But I should go do that again with another company. Because the 12th time is a charm, as they say. Why is it going to be a grocery store, though? It doesn't, Alan. It doesn't fucking matter where I go. I got fired from Greenpeace. And then instead of, and, and, and when you get fired, you're supposed to be able to pick up your check. Instead of that, they, they split my check into two checks, mailed one regular mail to the, the, the welfare center that doesn't take mail for people, and then sent the other one FedEx to the same place. So I had to go to, through two separate days of sitting in a waiting room at the welfare center waiting for someone to go through the mail pile for my check and then did it again the next day. And it was all because the guy who had just gotten out of prison told them to fire me. The guy who couldn't work for the company based on their own policies of not hiring felons. So after I got fired from the, the uh, memory care facility, I got a job. Luckily, one of the girls I work with, her husband ran a cab company. So I got a job with him riding cab, and I was good, man. In a, in a college town, cab driver, dude, that, I made some money. But, you know, they kept fucking with Victoria, and things were obviously still going on that I wanted to stop. So I saw a little flyer saying that the, the senator was going to be, give, uh, I forget which, Wyden, I think it was, the U.S. senator was going to be giving a speech locally on a day that I had the cab. So I got to hold on to the cab in the morning and then use it at night. So I, without ever Googling it or giving any information that I was going to see the senator, drove the cab to where he gave the speech Walked in as the speech was starting, waited till he was done, walked up to him and said, 
you know, here, this is what's happening. They've been fucking with me. They've been doing that. I didn't say that. I was obviously explained it without the F word. And he said, you know, talk to my staffer, give her your information. Then the next day, the cab owners called me into their place and they said, oh, uh, can I see your keys for a second? I uh, just got to double check them. And never gave them back. Said, hey, sorry, you're fired. Wouldn't tell me why. I made them a shitload of money. There was no one to replace me. It made no sense other than the fact that I showed up to Senator Wyden's speech the day before using that cab, and then they took it away from me. Are you seeing the pattern yet? Anyway, I, I, I'm almost certain that you've been forced to sign a national security letter, so you can't tell me. So I'm going to stop harassing you and just let you go. And uh, thanks for talking to me. You know, no, most people don't talk to me. So I, I do appreciate uh, the conversation. can promise you that I don't know anything about that. Well, you promised, uh, so that covers it. And we don't. I, I understand where it's been so much that you don't know who you can trust and do you think? who you can be around and <laughs> Actually, talk to and believe what they say. Alan, uh, 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 just just real quick on that, Victoria. Since this all started, dated one guy who wasn't an undercover cop. Okay, good guy. She knew him for a long time, and they were in love. Like for the first time in this whole process, I felt like Victoria's found a man, and she's gonna be okay, and like they're gonna have a family. And I felt relief for the first time of this stress that has been on me since her mother died and I've been responsible for it. So this is great, like great news. Her and this guy are doing great. And then this guy moves into their house, just like kind of weasels his way into an extra room at the house, gets them both, both hooked on meth, gets arrested for having illegal guns in a closet with large supplies of meth. They break up because he's got them all fucked up. So some moves, some moves into the house, breaks you up of the one person who isn't an undercover cop. Then you'd think, my God, he got arrested for large quantities of meth and illegal guns. Why is he out on the street nine months later fucking with Seth? So yeah, I, I can't trust anyone in if I can. I had a friend from high school that I was talking to regularly about five years ago. You know what she told me? She told me that she keeps waking up in hotel rooms with a guy not knowing how she got there. And what guy? And when I ask her what guy, she gets all nervous and says, I can't tell you his name. Anyway, thanks for listening, bro. You have a great life, all right? Don't, don't give up, man. <laughs> I'm not giving up. I should have been an artist 20 fucking years ago. I'm doing it now. I spent, before they cut the benefits in half, I spent all my money on paint and frames. I have 72 paintings on the walls of my apartment. And I was homeless a year ago. So, I'm not giving up. I'm trying to do the thing that I should have done in the first place. But, you know... I have absolutely, I have, no, nope, I, 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 Use your YouTube platform to, <laughs> to those people. Yeah, dude. I have 21,000 followers, and the last four videos I have posted have a total of, I think, about 40 views. Yeah, because they're not blocking my YouTube channel. It's going to all 20,000 people that wanted to subscribe, but then don't watch any of my videos. That makes sense. Yeah, YouTube's fucking algorithms are bullshit. Yeah. YouTube's been fucking with people for years. Well, that's, that's true. It's separate from my situation. That is also true. There's no question there. But my point is, using my YouTube as a platform is silly. Either I'm going to convince a rich guy to buy a piece of my art because it's good, and I make a good pitch that it's going to be worth a lot of money after I'm gone, because that's the only time an artist's it, stuff is really worth stuff. It's 20 years after he's dead. Did you, that, did you see that... Uh, the Van Gogh movie with uh, Willem Dafoe? No. You, you should, it's great. 
and at the end they show his funeral like he's laying his, his corpse is laying there it's his funeral and that's when people start buying his art I keep meaning to get a screenshot of that print it out and just kind of hang it over my computer as uh, inspiration <laughs> but I mean I'm gonna have to see that movie yeah no that's great sorry I was the ending but I mean he does die you know he dies Everyone, Van Gogh is not immortal although he is everywhere now so maybe he is immortal but that's the kind of immortality I'm going for, because I got art, I got art, I get my art, my art has art for the love of God. I mean, that's all I got. I can't go back and do that again. I thought I couldn't do a better job than I was doing. When I got to, to Price Chopper in Raytown, I fixed that department. I completely rejuvenated it and then got fired. I was proud to go to work every day. And I'm like, fuck, they fucked me again, and I got back at Sprouts, and I was proud of the job I did, even though no one helped me, and quite a few people seemed to be working against me diligently. But I'm not doing it again, dude. Like a wise man once said, if you get screwed 11 times, maybe look at other avenues of uh, keeping a roof over your head. I think that was W.C. Fields. Might have been Confucius, I don't know. Anywho, sure you got more shopping to do, so I'll let you go. Shit, jack shit's been popping up today. Oh shit? Yeah. When do you start the, the, the new job? I got, I got a $24 batch this morning and that's it. Oh shit, Jesus. But like last week, last week I was, I had completely replaced my Salary within a skirt. <laughs> wow. Yeah, if I tried it, man. My, my car was wheezing. The one day I did it, my car was wheezing by like the second or the third uh, thing. It, it was just no way. I mean, the, if I had a car that I could trust, I would probably be doing that and Uber. But I can't do anything with what I got. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to be an artist. And either it's going to work or it ain't. But I'm not going back to trying to get a department full of people to rotate food and then no one does it and then I'm told to cut production because the numbers are off. I mean, that just makes no sense, bro. No, retail, retail is for suckers. True, but you would think it's pretty obvious that the problems I was trying to get blamed for were all because nobody would rotate. I mean, that's 100% of that shrink or 80% of that shrink was because they would take the new meals and put them on top of the old meals on my days off, ruining any type of flow, and not only would no one do anything about it, Karen was the leader of doing that particular fuck with Seth shenanigan. No, I was still finding shit. Like, they, they would get new items in, and instead of printing off, they, uh, yeah, I got, I got this one, this one's good. Instead of printing off uh, a new shelf life list, Hmm. For the new item, mm -hmm. they would just guess. <laughs> now I could do that because I had it all memorized. But if I wasn't sure, no, you wouldn't have had it memorized because it's a new item. We've never carried it. Oh, uh, oh my God, new so item! Rather than rather than yeah. go to the computer and take five minutes to print off a shelf life list. So what would be? We'll just guess. So we'll just guess. We'll put twenty-one days on it and. So it's weird that, out later that it's supposed to only have 10 days. <laughs> it's weird that they would put, I mean, you, that was after Karen or while she was gone, but that type of behavior for the whole department. I think that was Karen right before she left. Okay. So that type of behavior. I, I went to Kenny and I sent him pictures. I was like, in case you need anything, because he was, he would ask me, I wonder, do I have to save her job for her while she's out? Or can I just get a new selling manager? Yeah. No, she's, like, well, she's done her job, Alan. For you, to try to do something before she leaves. you know, Alan, I, it, it was only later that I realized that when I was a receiver, the first time I worked there, how much Karen ingratiated herself into my circle. Like, she had me helping her in the bakery and kind of bonding with she me. Every, she, everybody she could get her hands no. on. Help me, help me, no, help me. Do no, of, for me. Of, of course. My point is... Do my job for me. Alan, do my job for me. All right. And yet, Kenny insisted she be my boss and then didn't do anything 
to get her to work harder that was, I mean, you said he did mysterious things you can't talk about, but nothing that actually got her to change her behavior. Just a little no, weird he, month after month. He put, you, he put you in the deli hoping that Karen wasn't going to work out and you were going to take her place. Karen didn't work out, and I was right there to take her place. When I, when I, when I showed that she had been using expired uh, walnut salad, I believe it was six weeks expired, walnut salad, and selling it, that was Kenny's favorite dish. Selling Kenny expired food? You'd think at that point, maybe that'd be a strike against her, but no, it sure wasn't. She, she was there right until I raised my voice. Then once I was gone, she went out on leave. Her job was done, bro. Anyway. I mean, this is going in circles. You're never going to admit it's obvious that... Oh, God, it just sounds crazy to say there's a conspiracy against me. There's no way to phrase that that doesn't sound nuts. Right? There's just no way. And yet... I've listed all these crazy things that have happened to fire me from job after job after job while I've documented person after person after person standing next to Victoria whenever I call her, actively hypnotizing her, actively raping her, and actively fucking with me. But if you add all that up and say, hey, it looks like that's crazy. That part's crazy. I get it. Sucks to be me, I guess. You know the worst part? You know the worst part of it all? The only end game, if you look through what's... It, it just, just for a minute, just take it on faith for a minute. Everything I'm saying is true. And that because in 2002 I had the most comprehensive website on Earth that proved that 9-11 was an inside job, so they decided to completely ruin my life and destroy my credibility. Let's just assume that that's all true. What would be the end game? Other than, well, there's only one. There's only one, and it's not pretty. Because there's, there's so many websites and videos and everything about 9/11. There really isn't. Yeah, I, I went back because here's the funny thing that they have specials, they have specials on on fucking Hulu and Netflix about it. No, I know, but those are all. There's there's a guy named John Gold. Okay, who you know who Cindy Sheehan is, right? The guy, the, the woman who, who protested Bush because her son got killed in Iraq. Okay. Remember her? Remember the woman that, that literally camped outside of his ranch, demanding to know why her son died in Iraq? Cindy Sheehan, big peace activist. Anyway, John. No, but I'm, okay. I'm following you. Okay, so so John Gold is literally co pot co hosting a podcast with her. Well, he's also, like, ingratiated himself into all of these uh, uh, high-level activists, okay? He's, like, the right-hand man for, like, three or four high-level activists. And his story about he claims to be a 9-11 truther, but he doesn't believe any of the 9-11 truth. He's got a story that follows exactly what the CIA is saying about 9-11. Oh, my God, it was all 100% those crazy Saudis. We need more money to spy on the Saudis. And I've confronted him. I've called him a knock on multiple times because he's obviously not a real truther. He's a fake truther who become, rises to the top of the truther movement and then just... Because he's a big chill. Obviously. Like, I mean, his story, and if you confront him with, like, the facts, when any, like, real truther is like, yeah, everyone knows there's no reason why Building 7 fell. Building 7 had to have been a controlled demolition. It had to have been. It's been proven. So you talk to him about that, and he's going, no, 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 sorry, blah, blah, blah. It, I mean, it makes no sense. My point is, is that if you go back and try to find the real, like, there's a there's a pilot for 9-11 Truth. They redid the animation, because if you take the official animation of the 9-11 Commission, it doesn't follow the data that was released by NORAD and NIST. So if you use the actual data instead of the fake, obviously wrong animation that was released by the 9-11 Commission you see that the plane that supposedly flew into the Pentagon flew over the Pentagon. That's proven by the data. And there was a, just an amazing video that 
literally it, it, it animated the track and showed that it's like no, any first time pilot is just gonna aim down and crash into the building. This pilot did an incredible 270 degree turn, came in across the lawn, 10 feet above the lawn, without touching the lawn, and crashed into the ground floor of the building, and the 9-11 commission says there's a 75 foot hole there, but the pictures show there's a 20 foot hole there. Also, there's not a plane there. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. My point is, I don't remember what my point is. My point is, is that I'm good at this. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> so I started, because it's so obvious that this guy who fired me from the Air Force Base 12 years ago is being paid to fuck with me. I decided to play into it, and I just went all out on my 9-11 stuff. I started going into the videos and recording stuff and making my own, like, collection of the... The core facts, like, stay, stay out of the conjecture, what do we know, what can we prove? And I just keep stringing him along, and I've called him, I've told him on his wall, I have told him that he's, he is a, a rape apologist for fucking with me while rapists were raping Victoria. I said that in front of his children, and he still won't block me. He won't stop talking to me, bro. He won't stop popping up on my wall and fucking with me. Year after year after year. So anyway, I started doing the 9-11 thing with him, and his stories get... He believed... There's pictures of when the, when the wall... When the ceiling finally collapsed at the Pentagon, you can see that the adjacent office buildings don't even have smoke damage. There's a picture of a book sitting on a stool. The pages aren't even singed. Right next to where he's now claiming a plane completely vaporized. His story is a fire vaporized aluminum and bodies and the, everything's gone, but it also didn't burn that paper 25, 30 feet away. So, I mean, it's just beautiful because he can't, it's not like he can win the argument. All he has are, he tried to, he, he's like, all you need to know is here at this, uh, this article in uh, Popular Mechanics. So I go to the article and the first thing is a, quote from the 9-11 commission saying there's a 75 foot hole in the wall which I juxtaposed with the picture of the wall showing less than a 20 foot hole and I'm like those are the people I'm supposed to, like it's obviously not true and now I'm in, like he, his job up until a month ago, he was the lead trainer of Afghan pilots he was in theater in Afghanistan training the Afghan Air Force and then fucking with me on my Facebook page. That sound weird to you? I don't understand the why behind it. Hey, welcome to the club, bro. See, that's the thing. Everyone, for the, the entirety of... I mean, I only knew it started in 2006. I always thought that they, when I yelled at that councilman in San Diego in 2006, that that's when it started. And it wasn't till much later that I examined some shit that went down in 2002 that made no sense at the time, but made perfect sense, and that's when the website went up, and that's when they started fucking with me. Do you want to know what that girl accused me of? Bet you do. What's that? So here's what happened. Classmates. Uh, you may not be old enough to remember classmates.com, but uh, before, back in the day, 2002, classmates was the way we all found each other. And out of the blue one day, I had, I had just had to move back. I got fired from my job at Islands in Beverly Hills, where I was the head server and one of the best employees in a way that made no sense and required a new GM coming in to do it because my GM wouldn't fire me. So I got fired from there. I have to move out of my beachfront house in, in Venice, beachfront apartment in Venice, and move back into my parents' house. And then out of, out, of, out of the blue, this girl I knew in high school that I had a crush on contacts me. They're like, oh, cool. And then she says, like, I'm like, I'm thinking we're going to start talking back and forth. She's like, you need to come see me in Orange County. Come stay at my apartment for the weekend. Oh, and by the way, someone's fucking with my life and stealing my identity and stealing money out of my bank. It's crazy. And I kind of, 
absorb all this. I'm like, sure, I'll go down there. Borrow my parents' car, drive to Orange County. She meets me at the car babbling about, they're, they're out to get me. They're, they're, they've, they've hijacked my identity and they're stealing my money, blah, 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 blah. And I need you to fix my computer. I need you to fix my computer. I'm like, okay, okay, calm down. So that first night, we kind of hang out. We go out to dinner. We're walking back and I kind of lean in to maybe kiss her a little bit. She's like, I want to take it slow. I'm like, sure. I'm, I mean, you know, we're a, I'm almost 30 now. I'm in no hurry. Like, I liked you back then. We'll get to know each other. Get back to her apartment. Um, we hang out for a while. She goes to bed. I sleep on the couch. In the morning, she wakes me up and then says to come into her room where she asks for a massage. So I give her a back massage. Everything's fine. She's like, well, what about breakfast? I'm like, I'm going to cook you breakfast. I go to the store. I buy some groceries and I come back and I start cooking this big elaborate breakfast. And she says, I make a smoothie. And she says, does this smoothie better not have uh, roofies in it? And I'm like, what? Why would you even? Like, I tried to make it. It was such a weird statement. I had to make a joke. I'm like, oh, you want it without roofies? Like, I didn't know. It was so. Like, that, that was my joke. Like, I didn't know what the fuck. Like, what would you do if, like, you're on a date with an old friend and she's like, it better not be roofies. And, like, what are you. Right? Anyway, so, so I. What's that? Yeah. So, so anyway, I, uh, so I would finish breakfast. Then she says, okay, I need you to fix my computer now while I do my makeup. So I sit down on a computer and she's got these weird tasks. She wants me to, you know, clear out cookies and blah, blah, blah. So I start doing this. She does her makeup. She comes out of the bathroom with her makeup on and looks like a complete, her posture is different. Like she looks like a different person came out of the bathroom. And she looks at me at her computer and her face turns ghost white. She looks like she just saw a, a murder. And she runs out of her own apartment. Just, <gasps> and runs out of her apartment. And I'm sitting there like, finishing up at the computer going, what just, like, where did she go? And then I start to hear sirens. So I leave her apartment and go looking for her, and she is at the local uh, coffee shop, sitting there surrounded by half a dozen firefighters and a policeman stops me and says we need you to sit down here on the curb sir she says you put roofies in her uh food uh no i i didn't and please test every so he tested every water bottle in my car and then they sent her to the hospital where she got tested and it turns out there were no roofies game over right like that's oops my bad i'm sorry i accused you of that is where that would go but it didn't she has spent the last 20 years, every time a mutual friend uh, friended me on Facebook, that mutual friend would then disappear because she's contacting them and telling them, I don't know, I haven't, no one, whatever it is, it's so bad, she, they won't even tell me. They just say, well, I'm going to unfriend him. 20 years she has been doing this. Doesn't it seem weird that... She thought that somebody was out to get her and told me to fix her computer and then witnessing me fix her computer is what triggered her to think I was the one out to get her. The whole fucking thing was her idea. Everything. All I did was yes. She told me to come to, to her apartment. Oh, and the best part is her roommate at that time said she was going to buy a piece of my art for $1,000. And then after the accusation, oops, looks like you're not selling art. Ha ha. There's no way to explain what she did without hypnosis. Why would she think I stole her identity? Her parents apologized to me, Alan. And to this day, it's going on. So you need to find new people. There are no... Stop. Alan, Alan. Stop mixing up with... Acquaintances. Alan, why would I put, if the last person I was good friends with, the last woman I talked to regularly, started waking up in hotel rooms not knowing how she got there, and nervously afraid to tell me the name of the guy she was waking up with, that's kind of a, a big red flag of me not to have friends. Victoria being raped and raped and raped, and now punched in the face. A couple weeks ago, they punched her in the face, and then hit her in the face with a wrench a couple days later. 
And yet here I am. You know, I had a fly stuck in my apartment the other day. And I decided just kind of as a, as a zen thing, instead of killing him, I was going to coexist. And he was my pet for like three days. I don't know if he got out or if he's, you know, dead in the corner somewhere. Literally wouldn't hurt a fly. And they have spent 20 years. If you can explain to me why somebody that never, that only called me once in his life, tracked me down on a military base to tell me to be a sleeper cell. Does that make any sense other than maybe I'm not imagining this? Like, that doesn't happen randomly, Alan. No, there's... Uh, by the sound of it, there's definitely somebody fucking with you. Thank you! But, See? That's but... Oh, wait, there goes the butt. Oh, I knew there was a butt. What's the butt? Why can't you just disassociate from these people? Humanity? Do what? You mean humanity in general? What do you mean disassociate? I'm telling you <laughs> that whoever... Look, I... You know that it's this one dude. Huh? You know that it's some other people. No! What, what part of it is everybody that's dated Victoria since she was 18? She's about to turn 31! Every- an undercover policeman got her pregnant. Hold on, okay. Okay. Okay, you there? Yeah, I'm here. An undercover cop got Victoria pregnant, and not by accident. It was a police action that involved the San Diego Police Department. They assisted in impregnating Victoria. And I know that sounds crazy, but let me explain. Her birth control method up until the day she got pregnant was to stand up and let the semen drip out of her. But that day, at a church in Ocean Beach, was the only day Kevin ever literally came into her cervix. She's like, it was crazy. Like, he jammed his... Felt like he jammed it right into my uterus. And then, right after that happened, like... As a cue of him coming, police sirens appeared. So they had to lay down and hide in those bushes for two hours while my grandson's undercover half crawled into her ovum. It was a deliberate police... There's no way that it just happened to be the day that he came into her cervix. Cops had him to show up and make them lay there so she couldn't drain the sperm out. That was a deliberate, and now I have a grandson. I've counted, her, her best friend has two kids from an undercover cop. Her brother now has a daughter, and his girlfriend has been fucking with me in ways that'll blow your mind, dude. She sent me a, a picture of a little white, they're, they're, they're both black. Well, Alex has half and she's full, I believe. So they're, my granddaughter's pretty dark skin. She showed me a picture of a little white girl, blurry white girl on a hospital bed and said, she's in the hospital. I need you to help me get a hold of Alex. Because all of a sudden me in fucking Missouri has to be the only way she can get a hold of Alex. There's no getting away from these people, Alan. When we, when I, when I was in the, maybe 15 years ago, my sister was at RCC and two people befriended her that were like out of central casting. They were like, if you were to cast a friend for my sister and all her crazy cool quirks, these are the people. And they were her best friends when she was selling me weed. There was just no, they have, they have befriended friends. They have, on the day of my, my 20 year class reunion, I got a phone call from a, from a classmate I went to high school with, and he told me, Seth, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you $4,000. He literally called, as I'm getting dressed to go to the reunion, I'm like, cool, dude, I'll see you at the reunion. I was like, no, I'm not going to the reunion. I just happened to be calling you right before the reunion to say, I'm gonna give you $4,000. Okay, thanks, buddy. That's great. So then for the next few months, he just strung me along. He once drove from Orange County to San Diego, where I was homeless, to tell me 
I finally got the check. As soon as it clears my bank, I'm going to give you the $4,000. Then he got back in the car and drove back to Orange County. Does that sound like somebody fucking with me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Why would you... Right? Why would you believe that he's just going to give you $4,000 and for what? Hey. And what's he mixed in? No, he, he, it's, a, it's a donation to my, to my, to mine 12 films, dude. It's like, I, I believe in what you're doing, bro. I'm so proud of all the art stuff and I want to help out. Then you believe that? Well, I, I, obviously not. You know what he wanted to be when he, in high school, you know what he told people that he, that he wanted to be? What's that? What do you think? No idea. A cop. That, that was years after it started. I had an art show in 2002 that was right before that girl invited me to Orange County, saw me at her computer, and assumed I was the one who had been taking her identity. Right, right before that, a guy I barely knew in high school showed up at my art show. Only person I knew other than my parents who came to Venice at my art show. Now I had a lot of $100 paintings, I had plenty of $10 paintings, and I had my best painting for $1,000. He told me, that's the only one I want, but I can only pay you 100 for it today. If you give that painting to me for 100 I will buy at least $900 worth of paintings from you. I'm, I, I'm now in real estate. I'm going to have all kinds of money. We're going to do this. I needed the 100 bucks, so I gave him my best painting. So then started, you know, as time went on, hey, what about that other 900? Because, you know, I sold you a $1,000 piece of art. He told me I need a business plan. You got to give me a business plan. I need to see a business plan in writing. So my dad and I spent weeks. We looked at business plans online, you know, copied their format. I, I went into the deep statistics of, of, you know, movies can lose money or they can make a whole lot of money. It was a business plan. And he said, nah, this isn't a business plan. And then he started telling our fellow classmates all kinds of lies about those interactions. My, my favorite part is a couple years later when I was homeless in Riverside, I decided to go sleep outside of his office. So I did. And then in the morning when he showed up, I'm like, hey, dude, I'm homeless. Do you have that 900 bucks? And he said, no, fuck off. So I did, and then the next night, somebody threw three rocks through his windows. Wasn't me, but that's a fuck of a coincidence, because now he's telling everyone, obviously, Seth threw rocks and broke my windows. Obviously. That's why they were broken, so you could blame Seth. I lived at the uh, Buddhist, a Buddhist retreat in Los Angeles for a few months after Audrey died. And this guy started attacking the complex. It was Zen Center of Los Angeles. Whatever building I was in by myself, he threw rocks at it. And when it happened once, it was, oh, wow, what a crazy thing to happen. Second time, oh, wow, what a crazy thing to happen. And so crazy that it was just Seth in that building alone when it happened. And then the third time, they're like, what? What's going on here? And then the fourth time, they're like, you know... I don't know what it is, but it kind of feels like Seth is connected to the guy who keeps throwing rocks through whatever window of whatever building Seth's in. And then I was asked to leave. And then I moved in with a rich millionaire in the Hollywood Hills. And then on the day he went on vacation, literally within minutes of him pulling out of the driveway to drive away on vacation, there was a knock at the door. I opened the door and a policeman holds a automatic weapon at my skull and says, step out here, sir. <clears throat> at that point, someone reported that I was cooking meth. You know I don't do meth. I fucking hate meth. That was the report of why the cops were there. So they left me handcuffed on the sidewalk for quite a long time while they looked for the meth. And then they left and something of mine was missing, Alan. My razor with my skin cells and DNA all over it, is the only thing that went missing during their raid of the millionaire's mansion. Right after I was asked to leave 
the Buddhist monastery because some guy kept throwing rocks at the building I was in. So as you can see, it doesn't matter where the fuck I go, what the fuck I do, it's never going to stop. But the best part is, the moment I stop breathing, everyone who was forced into silence can talk. The girl who brought me out to, to Missouri, <laughs> the girl who brought me to Missouri, that's a funny one. Her sister, I, I dated when Audrey and I were just dating. I dated her sister and I had to kind of choose between Audrey or this younger girl with a, a girlfriend who was offering me threesomes, but I chose Audrey because I loved Audrey and I just, it was one of those things where, one of those life choices. So I didn't choose Nicole, I chose Audrey. Years later, when Audrey was dying, she had a whole shitload of morphine, like big bottles of liquid morphine. And after she died, I got a hold of Nicole and I'm like, you guys want all these, this morphine? Didn't really dawn on me that they were listening to my phone calls. So I unknowingly kind of looped her into this. Now she has a kid by an undercover cop and her sister who brought me to Missouri four years ago has a kid by an undercover cop. And she actually almost told me how it happened. She was in a car with like 20 pounds of marijuana hidden in the, in the ceiling or the floorboard or something, and she got pulled over. Now the story she told, the lie, see that part's true. The lie she told me is, oh, but I, got, I talked my way out of it and got away with it. The truth is, that's the point where she had to do whatever they told her. You will go to jail for 20 pounds of marijuana with intent to sell, or you will do what we tell you with Seth, which is why she did, which is why she just fucked with me over and over and over again after I got out here, dude, in all kinds of different ways. And then when I brought Victoria here, she fucked, like we, I had Victoria, trying to get Victoria up to a dental appointment is the moment she shows up and starts fucking with us. Out of her way, dude. And I know she feels bad. I can see it in her face. She's not a bad, she's a good person. She's one of my favorite people in the world. And if she doesn't do what they tell her, she'll go to jail for 20 pounds of marijuana that her boy boyfriend had her fucking drive across town. Her boyfriend who's obviously an undercover cop. So there's no way out of it, Alan. But I appreciate your optimism. Around Victoria. Well, she is she is the thing they can torture. If I didn't have her, they really not much think other than firing me over and over again. There's no way they can hurt me. So they hurt her. Over and over. And and it's it's not like these are just like, hey, you could find it online type of, of hypnosis techniques. They had her believing there was something in her stomach that she had to throw up for hours and hours and hours. The, fa the pain felt worse than childhood. And then when we got to the emergency room, no, there's nothing wrong with her, but she's screaming bloody murder. They knock her out with morphine and then she wakes up. Hey, can I get a cigarette? Hey, let's get something to eat. I'm hungry. That happened four times. And the first time was at hypnotist number one's house. And don't take it wrong, but I, I, in one of the videos, if you ever watch it, it's not meant as a slur, but to try to jog her memory. I, it was John, Johnny, and the ginger, because Joss, the main hypnotist, was a redhead. They worked out a rape scheme where she was actually dating John, but then, and she was living with John and Johnny. I mean, she was living with John and Joss, the ginger, in a house with no doors. They take all the doors off the hinges. Then they move it into their buddy's house, who she will not sleep with because he's gross and old. But he has a similar name. He's Johnny. She's dating John, and his buddy Johnny raped her by telling her he was John. And she, the way she tells the story is, when he was going down on me, I felt that gap in his teeth and realized it wasn't John. It was Johnny. And I told him, get the fuck off me, dude. You know I didn't want to do that. That is hypnosis rape.
And those, that wasn't, those were the first three hypnotists. The movie I just made was hypnotist number seven. Those were the first three. Number four? Number four attacked me on three separate holes. He was covered in Nazi tattoos. I'm gonna kill your Jew dad is what he said when he attacked me on one of the holidays. Victoria faked a seizure so he'd leave me alone. And I didn't realize at the time, I almost murdered him. When I thought she was actually having a seizure because he'd had her strung out on meth for five days, he was holding her and I was in the kitchen getting her water and I almost grabbed a long knife and stuck it in his fucking eye socket, almost. Because I thought it was a real seizure. And I wanted it to stop. And I think at that point, if they're torturing somebody to the point that they're literally writhing on the floor unconscious and having a seizure, I think it's self-defense. Don't you? I mean, honestly, how many times would they have to rape your children before you would lose your temper? Just be a single time. Yeah, right? Right? I remember the first time, oh man, the first time she was in a car, I, I worked at the dispensary in, in San Diego where they tried to set me up to take the fall when it got closed. And I didn't realize buses didn't run on Sundays. So my first Sunday there, I'm stranded and it's like a two and a half mile walk. And I'm like, I'll just see if she's with someone with a car. So I call Victoria. She's like, yeah, I'm with a guy with a car, but uh, yeah, I guess I'll come get you. Where are you? And I tell her, and she's like, okay, we're on the way. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and then the phone rings again, and it's him, the driver. And he says, I just want you to know I got you, dude. We're almost there. And then he hangs up the phone, then he pulls over and rapes her, and I don't see her again until the next morning. So I wait there for hours, like they say they're coming, and now it goes to voicemail, what the fuck? And then I walk home, hoping she's there. She's not there. That was the first time they raped her. That was 11 years ago. And that's why I took the bridge hostage. People are like, why Why did you cause the largest traffic jam in San Diego history, bro? I'm like, because they raped my goddaughter. And I thought that would solve the problem, but it didn't. Because I'm the guy who just coexisted with a fly in my apartment for three days. But there is an alternate theory. <laughs> I mean, if, I, I, I might as well give you the alternate theory because this one is beautiful. So I was born on a military base in 1972 and they gave my mother these drops to squirt in my mouth from the time I was born. And then when I was old enough to take vitamin pills, I got little teeny pills next to my vitamin pills that I took until I was about 14. That was the high dose fluoride that totally fucked up my skull and my spine. That's why I do this all day long. Yeah, that's because of the fluoride. So the funny part about this is, Audrey was also born on a military base 10 months later, and she was also given high doses of fluoride. And when she was in junior high, her bones in her hips disintegrated. She had multiple surgeries and all kinds of bone problems. And then she got cancer at 29 and died two years later after it went into her bones. Now we know that very high doses of fluoride cause cancer. And we know that the CIA, thanks to Teddy Kennedy, in the early 70s was trying all kinds of drugs out on American citizens to see if they could control people. So it's not just a random high dose of fluoride, it's part of, they were testing what happens if we give people high doses of fluoride, will it make them compliant? And I guess that's why they keep raping Victoria, so they can go, wow, he, if real this fluoride stuff is something, bro, he won't get violent no matter what we do. Because I know they win if I get violent. I mean, it's not that I can't. I mean, I think it's important to know that after I took the bridge hostage for seven hours, I felt so bad about 
all the people who were stuck in traffic that I vowed that if I did any kind of action again, it wouldn't cause any... So I de-escalated, de but I tried to shut that federal building down with uh, ladybugs. Can't get more peaceful than a bunch of ladybugs in the federal building lobby. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a de-escalation. And do you watch Criminal Minds, that FBI propaganda show? You ever watch that one? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, it's fascinating to watch because I want to know how the mind of a profiler would work. And you would think if for 20 years they keep fucking with somebody and all he does is progressively de-escalate, maybe he's not a threat. So again, the, uh, the part we didn't get to before is the only rational reason for them to continue doing this, now that we know that they did 9-11, is that they're going to do it again. And they're going to set me up and then, see, my, I'm, my crossing my fingers that the end of that is, then it gets exposed what was done to me. Because I think, see, right now the people who are trying to overthrow the government in this country, the insurrectionists, their big enemy is the FBI. I think the FBI is going to get blamed for what they've done to me. I think if it comes out in the news that the FBI repeatedly raped a mentally disabled orphan to try to get her godfather to do something violent and they did that over and over again i think if that became a news story that would have far-reaching repercussions that would really help that's the worst part of this is that my story helps the insurrectionists in their propaganda campaign vastly vast like can you imagine if donald trump can go into a fucking rally and go you know this fbi this government they fucking raped a poor girl and all he did was turn the other cheek, and then they raped her again, and then he turned the other cheek, and then they raped her again. Can you imagine those people getting a hold of that story? Instead of me sitting in an apartment that I can't pay the rent for? Telling you? So that's, what, that's my fear. And every holiday, for years, I just assume it's coming. Like, I... I tell you, man, some of these holidays, I've gone to bed just believing that I'm going to be woken up by jackbooted thugs kicking in my door. Now, are they going to kill me and say, yeah, we caught them trying to, to fight us back? Are they going to fucking, am I going to be on an island with Ken Lay and uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein and all the other people that aren't really dead? Like, I don't know. But I know that there is no other reason that makes sense. Like, why would they keep doing it? Why would they escalate over, they, they've escalated recently. They never punched her in the face, they never broke her front teeth before. Someone punched her in the face and broke her front teeth. And then when I didn't react to that, they hit her in the face with a wrench and put her in the hospital a few days later. Because apparently I wasn't upset enough about all the fucking rapes. So, yeah, getting another job isn't really the answer to that. No. <laughs> yeah, we're getting somewhere. I, I, re I honestly appreciate you listening. No one has listened to this whole story. Like, I haven't spoken other than this conversation. I have not had a phone conversation with somebody other than, like, a, a worker or a... a you know, some, some, somebody who knows my name and who I am, this is the first one since I've been fired. I don't talk to people. My family, they'll, they'll comment on Facebook posts, but they haven't had a physical conversation with anyone other than Victoria. When she calls to tell me what they've done to fuck with her now, and I turn the other cheek and wait for the next shooter drop, if I may mix my metaphors. <laughs> There's no money in it. I was, uh, when, when the RV broke down in Oregon, when I was trying to get it from Washington to California, I got a job as a, uh, a, a actual journalist for newspaper in Corvallis, Oregon. 
Guess what happened? See, see if you can guess what happened. They fired me in a way that didn't make sense. Come on, dude. What do you think happened? Fucking sabotaged my career, dude. And they told me they when, at the at the the staff meetings there was no question who the alpha writer was. My editor told me I was the best writer he'd ever fucking edited. And the, the, the publisher, he had the, he's like, now that I have someone who can do this fucking high-level writing and researching and journalism, I got these ideas that I never thought I could do before. But then he sabotaged my career right around the time that I got fired from the uh, memory care facility by the woman who planted a knife on one of my patients and then tried to blame me for it. So yeah, being a writer, yeah, no, I'm good. The only thing that I can create and then infuse with value is my art. If I can convince somebody with money to burn, hey, if you invest $10,000 in this piece of art, it's going to be worth a shitload of money someday, and you're going to keep this artist going. That's my only hope. So when I'm going to the uh, Pleasant Hill, uh, they get the car show tomorrow. I'm bringing a bunch of my art and a bunch of my flyers because I can do that. Now, I have to do it on the spot. Like if, if, if a millionaire says, you know what, I think I'm going to do that and goes home to think about it, he's going to call back and say, no, I know that. Because he's going to get a phone call or a visit or however the fuck they do it. So that's it. This is my final stand, and I'm surrounded. The art's good, bro. It's not like I'm fucking. It's not like I'm bad at this. You seen any of it? <laughs> the picture you sent me yesterday was really good. What did I send you yesterday? I don't even remember. You made that? I don't remember what I sent you. The cheese thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that was I. See, I I tried to sell out a little bit. I did a bunch of. I did seven cheese paintings, and then I gave six of them away. And then this one was unfinished, and I'm like, well, I can't find my wrench. And it's huge. And I think if I do that, there's no way I can't find a piece that I'm going to get to. I'm going to find something about it. I'll fix this other piece that needs to come up from. So that's it. That, I mean, or, or I can try to go. See, here's the thing. I, I have a couple job interviews, and I'm done lying. Like, bro, oh, what well, happened to the last? Oh, I got fired in one time. I've been done. The story of, hey, I got fired by Cosentino's because I I uh, sent them a letter about the chicken. Sure, that's plausible. But why would my union rep be the instigator of the whole thing? Right? They hate unions. No one hates unions more than the fucking Cosentino family because most of their stores are not union. And the few stores they are cause them all kinds of problems. So why would my union rep cooperate with them fire me and then refuse arbitration which is in the contract as being provided by the union but I, if I said that to Kenny at my interview what ended there so uh, you know I tell the story of well you know <laughs> it always sucks with that that's me lying well you know I uh there was this employee and blah 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 and undercooked chicken and blah, but come on dude my union rep my new union rep, because my regular union rep obviously wouldn't do that. Just like it was a coincidence I got fired while Kenny was on vacation. That was a planned event. And obviously a planned event based on a couple days earlier, all decim Kit literally telling me things that he made, made no sense. You have to follow daily film, even though you're doing two days worth of production. So cut everything in half and just uh, yeah, the shelves will just be empty. Blah. Why would he tell me that? Why would Kit instruct me to destroy the department? And then Karen put the fucking shrimp on top of the thing. And then I raised my voice. 
and then I lost my job. That's my story. How you doing? That's a whole lot to fucking digest. Right? But I mean, um, but it's it's all true. But like listening intently, like that's why I asked you about writing. Like not so that you could be a writer and but like just sharing your story. Oh yeah. Well, but see, the problem with the problem with that is Jesus it's shit. Go ahead. It's what? I want you to finish that sentence. It's what? <laughs> Other words for it? I, no. No. <laughs> right? It, it's, uh, mind-blowing. Yeah. Whether it's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that. And, and believe me, I get that. mind-blowing. Yeah. And believe me, I've had to ride that dichotomy of hey, maybe this is not all in my head. Because obviously my family in the beginning, like when, when someone says, hey, the FBI is, I, I didn't even realize the CIA at that point was obviously behind it because I didn't know. I mean, who knew until it came out that the CIA was spent 20 years dosing Americans with drugs without their knowledge to see if they could create fucking controllable zombies. And I know that sounds crazy, but you know that TV show Dexter, right? about the serial, the serial killer. So when, when John and Josh moved Victoria into the rapist's house, one thing they did, see, I didn't know that he had raped her until I moved in. So I was so homeless. He was there. She lived there. He did the whole pretending to be John thing, raped her. She came to as it was happening. He said, wait, you're not John, you're Johnny. Then a few months later, they moved me in, and I still didn't know I was living with her rapist, Okay. But at one point, he, uh, oh my God, I forgot where I was going with that story. See, that's, it's just, it's 20 years of hell every day and trying to keep it straight is just, I just trail off. Sorry. That would have been a good story too. I don't remember what it was. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so, so basically the, 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 um, the Victoria zombie thing. So they, one day, Victoria just, uh, Victoria's playing video games, or oh, Sydney watching TV in her room, and they call her out to the uh, balcony. And I keep watching, and she goes out, or I pause it, I wait. She goes and has a cigarette with them. She comes back to the room, and she says, we're going to watch Dexter now. Like in a monotone voice, like, we're going to watch Dexter now. I'm like, why? I don't, like, like I didn't, she'd never mentioned the show, never said a word. She then watched... 13 straight episodes in a row of Dexter, okay? And then, see, she has multiple personality disorder and has since she was a kid. Her, the, 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 the like, in personality, the one that's just rage, the one that protects her, that she turns into the violent one. It's always been named Vic. Till that day, when she was done watching those 13 episodes of Dexter, those gentlemen at the house renamed her evil personality Dexter. And they can switch her into it with a voice command. And then it gets even weirder because a few years later, I start trying to mention this story. She keeps saying she doesn't remember John, Johnny, and Joss. It's all like, it's almost like a hypnotist says, you're going to forget all about this. And she has a hard time remembering it. It's exactly like that. Anyway, so I try to, like, jog her memory, and I, and I bring up things from that, and she says, oh, it's, uh, that personality isn't named Dexter anymore. That personality is now Bio, which is the name of, like, an ancient demon. Victoria, not being much of a, you know, ancient demon researcher, coming up with the name Bio for her, that personality makes no sense. 
In fact, from what I've seen watching someone with multiple personalities for 20 years is each personality's sole identity is their name. The idea that the name would change for the violent part of her personality twice makes no sense on its own. Now, I believe that she thinks that personality is named, now named Bio, but I also know Dexter's still in there, which means if they want to trigger Dexter and use her to do something, she would have no memory of it after. And Dexter will murder a motherfucker. Don't even, don't even, if they put a gun in Dexter's hand, Dexter don't give a fuck. That was a manipulated event where they created a new personality in Victoria. Where the rape, the first one, well, okay, the second rape team. It was first rape team, second rape team, third, well, that was, doesn't, fourth, I guess this is the fourth rape team she's on now. And they've both raped her. The, the hypnotist six and hypnotist number seven, which trade off. They trade her off so they get time off because, you know, you can't just be undercover every day of your life. You need a vacation. But now you understand why when people say, Seth, you're crazy to think everyone's out to get you, kind of upsets me because I, I know all this happened to me and no one else does. Yeah. Thank you. Probably the first person who has said yes to that question in 20 years. And I get it. Like, I, I'm not angry at my friends. I, like, I, my friends, I understand. Like, I understand that from the outside, either Seth is being actively hunted by federal agents who destroy anyone who gets close to him, or he's imagining the whole thing. Either way, you step, you step back from that, right? Like, who the fuck wants to get involved in that? Yeah. And my family, they decided... 15 years ago that I was imagining the whole thing and the fact that I now have copious vis uh, video evidence documenting thing after thing after thing after thing. I mean, if the new people are using the same hypnosis techniques that the guys 10 years ago were using and they don't know each other, that's kind of hard to explain. Like, there just happens to be seven hypnotists, a fucking top-of-their-game hypnotist who can literally control somebody in and out of different personalities, and they're all just functioning on their own in little Lancaster, California. And when I call the cops and try to get them to do something, even reporting rapes, they don't do... The cops protect these motherfuckers like they were... I don't even have a way to finish that analogy. So that's the thing. The part of my story that's conjecture is me saying all these people are feds. I can't prove that. All I can prove is that I've got video of seven different hypnotists all using the same techniques when th there's no way they could all know each other. And, and the best part is that if you look at what they're doing, it's always just fucking with me. I just found a video of Victoria with hypnotist number seven. See, hypnotist number six knew her code for her social security uh, money card because she's full social security benefits because she's disabled. He knew her code because he was her boyfriend. So she, she sent him to the store. He knew the code. His gambling buddy dated her for a weekend and stole her card and then changed the password in the system so I couldn't even report it stolen for two months and they spent one of her stimuluses and two, almost three months, about three months worth of her money. And during that time, all she had to do was call me between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. so we could call the, the, the local Social Security office. They kept her away from the phone during those hours for two months. And at one point, she called me at 11 a.m. her time and said, look, like all up and like, like functioning. She's like, I'm doing laundry and I'm getting errands done today. And as soon as I get to the laundromat, I'll call you, we'll sit on the phone, we'll call Social Security and get my car back. Great, Vicky, this is awesome, let's do that. Six hours go by. 
30 minutes after the place closes and we can't call, she calls me. And she has no recollection of the morning call. And I ask her about it. She's like, oh, no, that was, that was uh, uh, Patrick who called you. I'm like, what do you mean it was Pat? You called me and said we were going to do this today. She thinks Patrick dialed the phone and made that call. Because he did. And then he switched her into the personality that sat comatose on the couch for six hours and then had her call me oblivious of the whole thing. And then we went through like another month before we could get her fucking social security card. And guess what? They had to send it to me because obviously it's going to keep getting stolen from her. So now I have her social security card and I have to Western Union her money every few days for the rest of my life. So a deliberate action taken by these people that affects, and the best part is because they still won't let her get an ID. And by they, I mean the people she lives with. Patrick has her believing she can't go to the DMV because she's too ugly. What? Yeah, no, that's the reason. There, there has to be something to keep her in the house. She doesn't want to be there. She keeps saying, oh, I hate fucking sleeping on this guy's couch and he rapes me once in a while and I want to get the fuck out. Okay, go to the DMV, get your ID. Oh, I can't, I'm ugly. But the best, the other hypnotist that kind of works in tandem with him, Julian, there was a point where Victoria was calling me, needed money right away because sometimes if she does too many cans, she loses control of her bowels and poops her pants. She was in Julian's van with shit in her pants, calling me for money so she could get into a hotel room. Now I missed the call because it woke me up, so I immediately start calling her back and she's not answering. And it went on for like 10 minutes and, and, and it was clearly something was wrong because she, she was panicking. So I checked the voicemail. She didn't know the voicemail was still recording. And Julian didn't know the voicemail was still recording when I called back. So you can hear him in the background as I'm trying to reach them. My voicemail is also recording him telling her, don't answer that phone. You're nobody. Seth is somebody, and I am somebody, but you're nobody. Why would he want to talk to you? While she's sitting there with shit in her pants in his van, that's how he kept her from answering the phone so I could send her money so she could get a hotel room and clean up. So you can see why, I don't know where that sentence goes, like, <laughs> but again, thank you for listening, because individually, each of these stories is nuts, but when you hear, let's see, we've been on the phone for two and a half hours almost, I appreciate that, when you hear two and a half hours of my stories added together, and I can back him up with video of all the shit I'm saying. It's kind of hard to say I'm making it up. There's one video of Patrick. She calls me kind of in the zombie in the zombie personality, having a hard time speaking. And apparently him sitting next to her crossed his arms like an Egyptian, which switched her into a totally different personality. But, she, but it was so obvious as it was happening and as she was switching, she goes, why would you cross your arms like an Egyptian like that? And you can hear it. Now, I still have to look. The video somewhere. I have so many videos, I don't know where half of them are. But in the video, you can see it's obviously one personality. He makes this gesture in front of her, and she switches into a complete different personality. Thank God she happened to, vis to, to, to verbally say what he did. So it's obvious he's controlling her. There's video when I went there. He was the house I rescued her from after I spent $11,000 just for Julian to convince her to get on a Greyhound and go back to California so they could spend the next year and a half fucking with me more. $11,000 and she gets right back in a Greyhound, goes back there and like, she calls me regularly, why won't you come get me? Why won't you go to the DMV? I can't, I'm ugly.
Don't know what to do. I was home one of the, one of the times I was homeless in Lancaster. I uh, I was still vining and doing videos and being creative, and I had all my like like I had that big floppy red hat. I don't know if you saw the videos with that and the big blue wig and all all my different things for the Mindswell project in my bag, and I was sleeping next to a DMV. And I. I have, a, I, I have a small bladder, so I, and I drink a lot of water, so I always get up in the middle of the night to pee. And when I was homeless, I always made sure I was near a tree where I could have privacy, so when I get up in the middle of the night to pee, I could just go pee and go back to bed. So that fateful night, never got up to pee. Woke up as if, you know that feeling you had surgery where you, they put you under and you kind of wake up out of it and you're groggy and you get a headache and feel weird? Uh, no, I've never had a major surgery. Okay, so anyway, it, if you have anesthesia, you wake up it's just, it's a, it's a distinct feeling. So I woke up feeling like that, and everything was gone. My suitcase was gone, my backpack was gone, my wallet was gone, my phone was gone, everything was stolen. And then the very next day, at a homeless shower, there's a girl wearing my hat. And I'm like, hey, that's my hat, where'd you get it? And her boyfriend, like, steps in front of her and gets in my face. Fuck you, dude, none of your business. And a week later, that boyfriend was dating Victoria. He's the one who used to attack me on holidays with his Nazi tattoos. The, and, he, and he met Victoria the day after his best friend stole everything I owned. So I almost defected. Like, there was one point where I was, like trying to get a path to either the Russian embassy or the Chinese embassy, figuring they'd help, like they'd want to expose this just to make America look bad, and then I didn't want to do that. Like, I don't want to make America look bad. I still love this country, man. I want this, to, I want them to stop raping a mentally disabled homeless girl in the hopes that finally they'll get me to justify their 20 year war against me by being violent, dude. It's not gonna happen. So, there's no end. That's why I'm, I'm excited about this cancer, dude. I'm gonna be honest with you. I couldn't really say it to Victoria, but when I was planning my, my to tell her, well, I was gonna say something like, I got bad news for you and good news for me. <laughs> like, whoa, man. Because I believe suicide is, is I, I don't use the word sin, I just, Audrey, the, in the four and a half years I knew her, Audrey only made me watch one film. It's What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams. You ever see that? I have not. You need to see that. It's a fantastic movie. But anyway, it's about his wife commits suicide, so they can't be, and then he dies in an accident, but they can't be together because she committed suicide, so she's in a different place. So he has to fight his way down to her pur purgatory. And after we watched that, I made a comment to Audrey like, I know you'd never do that for me. And she looked hurt, which is how I knew she really loved me. But anyway, the point is that it's just so kismic. The only film she's ever made me watch was about somebody who commits suicide so they can't be together in the afterlife. So I'm, I just, there's no way I couldn't. Like, I can't. Like... I've come up with two different ways where it could look like an accident so the kids could still get the insurance money, and I still can't do it because I, I, I love life. I don't want to die. But I, I want them to stop raping and torturing Victoria. Like, that's the floor of, like, can you just leave her alone? Like, if... I, I am jealous of people who have been physically tortured by governments because at least... There's no denying it, <laughs> right? Hey, look at the whip marks from the CIA. It's real. What's happened to me? Nobody. Yeah, you contact these people and just be like, oh yeah. Oh, you didn't see the, you didn't, you didn't see the video where I left a message on on uh, James Comey's secretary's voicemail, begging them to leave. I've called the FBI. I've called the White House. I've called over a dozen senators and congressmen. Begging for help. Those videos are all on YouTube. There's no question that I'm... I don't know what else to do. Hold on a second. Yeah.
meetings on Tuesdays. So yeah, no, I mean, what, what, that, that what you just said, that's, like I said, most people don't get to that point because they don't hear more than one or two stories and they're like, that's just crazy. But when you hear 10 or 11 stories, it's well, like... It is, it is fucking crazy. Oh yeah, I'm not, but, obviously. I, but is it believable? Is it believable? I don't, I don't know. I mean, do you think I'm making this up? No. Okay. You think... It's possible I'm misconstrued. How could somebody make it up? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I have been. That's the thing is, because 10 years ago, my family... Wait, go ahead. Spent fucking... Unless, you, unless you've spent years and years and years just writing a story and making it your own. <laughs> yeah, right? But, but again, it, all that might be possible if I didn't have all this video. I mean, if I didn't... Can you imagine somebody sitting in the passenger seat of your car with shit in their pants and you're trying to stall them getting the money for a hotel room to clean up by telling them that they're nobody? That is the most damning piece of evidence I have because he it's literally that moment where he doesn't think he's being taped. And I'm trying to call her back. Like, I obviously trying to get a hold of her and he's just, don't answer it. You're nobody. Seth's somebody, I'm somebody, but you're nobody. Why would you answer it? And how do you, how do you have that on tape? Because I, I called as she was leaving a voicemail message, so she didn't realize the voicemail was still recorded. It's all on my voicemail. Uh-oh. Yeah. So he had no idea the phone was still recording to voicemail. He was just trying to, doing his job, which was to keep her from answering the phone when I'm calling her back. Which makes no which makes no sense normally, but the fact that she's sitting in the passenger seat of his van with shit in your pants and he's stalling me. I mean there's just no rational Why would anyone do <laughs> And that same guy, that's the guy that got her to go back to California after I spent eleven thousand dollars bringing her here. That's the guy. That's the guy, when we were in Cal... See, I picked her up in California. All of her friends each made us wait a couple extra... Like, there was all these things that made it go on and on and on. While well, then money's going to hotel rooms and food and let's get the fuck out of here. And it keeps going on and on and on. Finally, we leave and get all the way to Arizona. But he's still in contact with her. Gets me to drive... She insists I drive her all the way back to California. And I make plane tickets. Like, I'm planning, all right, well, you're back. I guess I'm leaving. And then she's like, you can't just leave me here. So, get her in the van again. We head all the way back here, and he's just... Turns out he was talking to her every day, keeping it a secret. Oh, if you come back to California, we'll have a house, and we'll live... Blah, blah, blah. She gets back there, and she's in his van getting raped by him again. And, oh, the point of that was... So in the hotel, so I have video at one point when we came back from Arizona the first time, she kept referring to him as Superman and her as Supergirl and the room that they were in as Super Room. And at one point I have her on video saying, you know, it's not easy being me and having to be Supergirl. And in that room, twice over a matter of about 15 minutes, she, in the middle of a conversation, 
just kind of stopped and went, where am I? What's happening? At which point he's like nervously, oh, don't worry about it, honey. I mean, there's no... That's all on video. It's not like I'm making... I mean, that's why I can never write the story. No one would... Be, the only way this story... Like, no publisher would take this story as a work of, of nonfiction. No way this would ever get published as, as some fictional sci-fi fucking thing. I haven't gotten into the fucking... The tracking nanites they put in my arm in 2006. No, so that's... That, that's why... See, I don't mention that anymore because that sounds crazy. So I, that was when my family's like, yeah, I, they put tracking nanites in your arm. We don't even know what half those words mean. We're going to think you're just crazy. So I stopped telling people that part. But there's just no doubt. So you got quiet at that part. That part sounds crazy, right? Take that as a yes. That's the thing, is this story... You know, that people watch for entertainment purposes and don't actually believe it's true. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why it gets Hulu special. Yeah, and that's why, I mean, it's 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 almost cliche to say the government's after me and everyone goes, rolls their eyes, and yeah, sure he is. Like, my, one of the things my family would always say is, why you? Who, the, who are yeah. you? Like, why you? Like, and, and, and the worst part is, people always put that as, if I can't answer that fully and completely, then... Obviously, my story's full of holes. Like, there's no other crime committed against somebody where you're forced to come up with the reason the person committed the crime against you. Imagine, you know, a, a detective... Unless you're, uh, unless you're... Brett Kavanaugh. Unless you're who? Nothing. Who? Oh, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Brett Kavanaugh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I... I don't know what to do, man. I don't know, man. I am not a lot. Yeah, no, I, I don't expect that. I, and I know you have that innate wanting to solve a problem part of you, and just tell him to relax. Tell that part of you to relax, dude. That part can't help here. <laughs> there's, there's nothing for that part of you to do, man, because there is no answer. I mean, there is one answer, but I won't do it. I mean, I know if I hung myself right now that they would stop torturing Victoria. Imagine that dichotomy. Spending years and years knowing that... The thing is, you don't even, you don't even really know that. Well, I mean, yeah, and that's true. Because it, it, it makes so little sense what they're doing to me. Would they stop with her? Like, or would they just... I mean, it, at this point, she's been raped by so many federal agents that... I mean, it's it's almost like it's part of their training. Like, uh, yeah, well, I'm third year. Have you raped Victoria yet? Because, you know, that's fourth year. The training protocol of whatever government agency this is. I mean, that first one, it was... He called... Like, why, if you're about... I mean, if somebody's about to rape the girl in the passenger seat of their car, why would they call the person waiting for them so I could recognize his voice? Like, I mean, he, I hadn't even heard him before. And what I had to do afterwards was the worst because she also, besides raping her, he stole her wallet. So I had to borrow a car from my DEA co-workers. This is when I worked at the dispensary and I was the only non-DEA motherfucker there. They let me borrow a car so I could go help her meet him somewhere to get the wallet. And then he started leading us on a wild goose chase, like, meet me here. And we'd go there and he'd go, no, meet me over here. And, I, and she started, like, I could see her panic level going up. And then she, and then we, there was McDonald's, we were supposed to, like, a third meeting place. And I pulled in, and in my head, I knew what was going to happen. If I stay, he's going to leave. But if I leave, he's going to give her the wallet. So I had to leave her in a parking lot with her rapist. I had to. It was the only way to end what was happening other than, 
I mean, it wasn't even my car, dude. I could have fucking... I, I wanted to run him down. That was the other reason. Like, I once I realized this is only going to stop if I drop her off, and she, her tweaker cop buddy was on his way. Like, I knew when he got there, she was going to run off with him anyway to do tweak. So my presence is keeping this guy from giving her a wallet, so I have to just step out. And then I get back to the dispensary, and all the guys there are giving me dirty looks. They don't ostensibly know anything other than I borrowed a car for a personal reason, and they're giving me dirty looks because I left Victoria in a McDonald's parking lot with a rapist. How would they know that? Meanwhile, though their bosses... See, I got a job at the dispensary, and then the dispensary owners opened two new dispensaries and then promoted me over all the other people to be district manager of those three dispensaries. And then San Diego started raiding dispensaries and closing them down. And then the moment that we were at risk of being raided, the owners quadrupled the amount of product in the back room at all three dispensaries and then started carrying plants. Little clones, they're called clones, they're like pieces of a plant that grow on its own to a new plant. Now, that's a whole nother charge. And they had me using my personal cell phone to communicate with all three dispensaries, but then I had a throwaway phone to talk to them. So, forensically, on paper, it looked like I was running all three dispensaries. And right before the raid happened, they had it circled on the calendar. How the fuck would they know when the raid's coming? Circled on the calendar. And I saw it coming, I'm like, I'm, they're setting me up. Obviously, if all the phone's records go to me, and there's now quadruple product and plants, which is another federal charge, I'm going to prison. So I walked, and I tried to call a press conference, and their lawyer got a hold of me, brought me into a, a public place, we sat me down at a Starbucks, took out my phone, shut it off, told me to let it go. And it was after that that I took the bridge hostage. And when, <coughs> once I realized it wasn't accomplishing anything and I surrendered, they put me in a mental hospital for 14 days and they force medicated me with a drug I was having a reaction to. And the reason the doctor gave for force medicating me is when I told her the story of what had happened, she, when I told her that they had started carrying clone plants, at the dispensary, which was a whole nother charge, she put in a report that I said, my coworkers at the dispensary had been replaced with clones. <laughs> and based on that, they forced medicated me with Risperidol. But because I was smart and the nurses there didn't really give a shit, I only took, in, in 14 days, I only took three doses because I would put it under my tongue, go to the bathroom, spit it out. But then I got, like, a, 10 days into it, a nurse, one of those stickler nurses that made, like, made me stand there and watch me swallow it. And then I had a reaction. But the doctor didn't believe I was having a reaction because she's like, you've been on it 10 days. Why would you be having a reaction? And I couldn't tell her I'd been throwing the pills away or they would make sure I took every pill. So I had to just have that reaction. I, like, had trouble breathing and my nose was closing up. So I'm never doing that again, which is why I thought the, the ladybugs in the federal building would be kind of cool, you know? Like, oh my God, look how peaceful that dude is. So that's most of them. There's others, but those are like the main ones. I don't remember. I saw she's that. Like in the, she's in the, or he, Norman Bates is in the mental institution and he's stuck as his mother. And uh, I remember a that. fly lands on him and he's, straight, he's in a straight jacket and a fly lands on him. And he's like, see this fly? I'm not even going to spot that fly. That way they're going to be like, 
Is that really a thing from that movie? Shut up, then. She's so innocent, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh, that's creepy, dude. I didn't. I saw that when I was a, like a kid, dude. Like I don't remember that part of the movie at all. That is so crazy. What? That's. Well, now I'm gonna stop using that metaphor. I, I think that it's. I think that it's psycho. Hold on a second. Oh my god. I thought the end of Psycho was just his mother's dead body in the thing. I don't remember anything after that. But I again saw it so long ago. I don't remember. Sorry if you hear this in the background, looking to see if there's a clip I'll send it to you. Okay. Okay, he's not in a straight jacket. I think they just gave him a blanket to sleep with. But the fly scene still happens. Do what? The fly, that's where the fly th scene happens? Yeah, I'm watching it right now. Make sure it's the right scene. Okay, while you're doing that, I gotta run and pee. I'll be right back. Alright. Back. <coughs> you still watching the video? You there? Got your text. So I'll, I'll check that out later. That's that's so creepy. <laughs> the coincidence. Yeah, it's, it's like ver verbatim. <laughs> I honestly had no idea. Like I was, like a fly just got caught in my apartment. I almost like my first thought was fuck this guy, and then I'm like, you know what? Just like as a meditative thing, like that's part of Buddhism is they they make them sit there in a in a room full of mosquitoes and not swat them. So I'm like, I'll try it. And then it's in Psycho as the same fucking... That's great. <laughs> oh, that's great. Man, made my day, bro. See, here's the thing. And this is... This is... This is... Talk about conjecture. This is big picture conjecture. Like, what could this possibly... Why could this possibly be happening? So imagine if they really did give a certain subset of people born on military bases high doses of fluoride... Which probably killed most of them off in the third in their thirties because Audrey's physical the way she deteriorated was just it's always unreal. So maybe if if the goal of this program was to see how it pacifies people, maybe there's like a Job project. Like we're gonna fuck we're gonna destroy this guy's life over and over and over again and see if we can get him to snap. And uh you know, I don't. <laughs> but that's just a theory. I mean, that's just me trying I mean, to make... It's the same... Same joke story. What do you mean? It's the Bible. Like, it's just... That's what I'm saying. I mean, if you look at what's happening to me, and the fact... I thought it was 16 years, but it turns out it's been 20 years. There's no, like... The amount of times I have crawled out from homelessness built my life back up, got a decent job, and then got fired from that job in a way that made no sense. Like I said, it's now happened 11 times. 
So there's no, it's not like there's, and, and this is how, maybe I am crazy because I honestly believe, like with the fly thing, that I can convince them to leave me alone. <laughs> That's crazy. They're not going to stop. There's nothing I can do to get them to stop. <sighs> but it's a hell of a story. Thank God for weed, man. I, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it at least calms me down to give me the perspective to be able to, to just, I just turn the other cheek. I made a video about turning the other cheek five years ago and the amount of times they've raped and tortured Victoria since, not to mention the jobs they fired me from that make no sense. Like at any point over the last 15, 16 years, it would have made sense if I just... Like, I don't even know. There's no... But you said that day that I sounded suicidal on the phone that you felt like there was something else going on. This is the something else. Okay. So you can imagine the, uh, the philosophical question if people you loved were being tortured because of your existence, is suicide still a sin if it saves them, them from the torture? Like, I think about that every day for... Since the first time she was raped, and I don't, I, it's, I just can't do it because I still believe there's going to be a happy ending to this. Like, I still believe, like, some, someone at the NSA is going to leak the file, and the moment the press gets it, it's going to be like, my phone's going to start ringing. They're like, according to this, the government's been doing some crazy shit to you, bro. Tell your story. And that's, like, I still believe that day is coming. Like, I think about Nelson. I know it's a little... Presumptuous, I think of Nelson Mandela. All those years in prison, didn't give up, ended up being president of his country. Like, there's a... I'm not saying Frank Barris is going to win an election. I'm just saying that there's a path. <laughs> that, was, that was a joke. You can laugh at that. Just don't give up, man. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not. Like don't, I said... Don't do that. I'm not, I, I, I will never give up. That's the, th that's the thing. I mean, I appreciate you saying it, but I mean, there were plenty of, uh, say, pressure points in this experience that would have been really good time to give up. And I just, I honestly believe my story is true. My cause, as someone who's been tortured by his government for 20 years, is righteous. And I, it's the story will come out someday. And if it comes out while I'm alive, I become a millionaire. If you, can you imagine the settlement they would give to keep this from coming out in open, like all the secrets from coming out in open court? Well, they got a, uh, what is it, the fucking Clockwork Orange? I don't remember. I saw that a long time ago, too. It's big. But they brainwashed this dude into, uh, <coughs> I remember that part, yeah, that yeah, was disturbing. They, they brainwashed him, they brainwashed him into, like, finding it disgusting, and so then he couldn't function like a normal human anymore, and at the end, they give him a settlement to keep him quiet. <laughs> I don't remember that ending. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Except, I mean, it... Because, uh, like, he got, uh, he got beat up, like, when they released him back into society, he got beat up by... They were. Oh, of course they were. One of the videos I got in my queue of things that I want to get done is just a super cut of me accusing Victoria's boyfriends of being cops. Because at each, at each point in, in each relationship, I put up with it, put up with it, put up with it, and then at one point I'm like, 
you fucking narc piece of shit. Like, there's always, there's, and it's always our video, so just over the years, me confronting them and them getting all defensive and nervous and trying to change the subject and... As far as I, I once counted how many, like, Vicky has a kid, Alex has a kid, Vicky's best friend has two kids by a narc, then the two girls who brought me out here, there's, there's half a dozen kids that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this fucking torture campaign against me. So I like to think that that's a positive thing. Right? There's, like, my pain has brought a new generation into the world. And I assume, like, when, when, if Stone's father is a cop, which obviously he is at this point, someday Stone's going to grow up and have a really good job in that world and will be able to finally have access to my file. And see, I spent all these years trying to get his mother free from the people who, I mean, when they took custody of him from her, it took four undercover cops to make her lose custody. She was going to drug treatment, she was drug free, and those first two guys, John and the Ginger, moved her in, into their house, promised me, like, John shook my hand and said, I'm gonna help you keep her off meth, bro. They moved her into the house without any doors, and fattened her up, they started like cooking these big witch stews, she gained like 20 pounds, and then they started becoming meth heads. And she tried to say no, and then they said, you know, try this, and they handed her a can. I have video of her in their house the first time she was doing the can, and it was just like now. Like, she completely, she's malleable, they can do whatever they want to her on the can. There's no, it's funny, the stories that tell now about how the CIA spent all that, those years trying to figure out a drug that could control people. The official stories, like, NPR actually covered it. And at the end, they're like, well, all for nothing, because they could never really find out this magic serum to control people. But they did. It's They sell it at Walmart. There's a display at every Walmart in America full of these cans. And if somebody inhales that can and you hypnotize them, they'll do whatever the fuck you want. They've done that to her for <coughs> years. Oh. She's probably getting pissed. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. Uh, you, you, you've you've given way too much. I appreciate that, bro. Go home and get ready to pick my daughter up from school. Okay. Starting kindergarten this year. Oh, cool. Well, uh, thank you for listening, man. I, uh, you, you didn't have to sit here. It's now exactly three hours. You didn't have to do this. And I really appreciate you letting me get it out because. Because I. I <laughs> Okay. All of that, all of that would drive any, any person to the brink of just about anything and insanity and not having anybody to talk to about it is, it has to, it has to suck. Yeah, no, I mean, um, it really has. And you can see why, I mean, you, you saw how diligent I was about food safety and getting the department running right. That, that shrimp dripped over so much food. Like, there was no reason for her to put it up there. But you can see why I raised my voice. Like, apparently, like, people who were in earshot were looking at me weird after. I know when I get left. Because Karen was arguing with me that it was no big deal. She's like, yeah, I did it. It's fine. I'm like, no, there's, there's dripping from the shrimp all over the food that we can't now sell to people. And that's when I raised my voice, because she was deliberately gaslighting me into, ah, oh, no biggie. And Kit was sitting right there to witness the whole thing. But you can see now why I raised my voice, right? I thought then. <laughs> Before hearing all the additional stuff. Well, that's apparently the only company policy I violated, which... Allowed them to end my tenure there, which apparently they wanted to do after watching my YouTube videos, which apparently certain co-workers of mine 
all got together to report to HR. So that fits exactly with the other 10 firings and making no sense. Except for the, in the context of everything else. But I'll let you go. I, I mean, this could, <laughs> this could go on. You, you, thank you, man. And you take care of yourself and uh, keep in touch. Yeah. All right, man. Take care.